Assalamu alaikum and greetings. Can everyone hear me loudly and clearly? Walaikum as salam, yes. All right, so I'm going to ask for everyone who's able to open up their camera phones for their introduction. Please open up your camera phone one by one and introduce yourselves one by one. Once you have introduced yourself, you can kindly close your camera if you choose to do so. Salam alaikum, executive. Senior instructor, Imam Adib Abdullah, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Assalamu alaikum. I am Bashir Muhammad, uh, East Los Angeles by way of Compton in Panorama City, California. Hi, Salam alaikum. My name is Hadiya Ansari. I live in Rex, Georgia by way of Atlanta, Georgia. Assalamu alaikum, Sophia from Bermuda. Beautiful. Assalamu alaikum, Salim Muhammad from Charlotte, North Carolina. Assalamu alaikum, Nevada Shabazz in New Orleans. Assalamu alaikum, Kareem Hassan from Cleveland, Ohio. Salam. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Abdullah from Brooklyn, New York. Peace, people. Assalamu alaikum. Ramzadeen Ami, Columbia, South Carolina. Assalamu alaikum. Fatima, Fort Myers, Florida. <clears throat> Allah's peace and blessings to you all. This is Ahmed Hassan, uh, senior instructor from Washington, D.C. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Executive Senior Instructor Habiba Abdul Shahid calling from Camden, New Jersey. Assalamu alaikum, Warda Amin, Columbia, South Carolina. Jesse, no Carolina. Emmanuel Joyner, Savannah, Georgia. Anyone else who has not introduced themselves, take the time to do so now. This is the official roll call. I'll be starting in just a couple of minutes. We're trying to let a few more people in who are having difficulty. So thank you for your time and attention. Thank you for your patience. I am your instructor, Benjamin Bilal, and we're going to be getting study, uh, started, pardon me, with this very interesting study in an uh, in area of the Quran 
that is not delved into by many scholars, and that is the meanings of the so-called abbreviated letters, al muqata'at they're called in Arabic. And the very fact that al muqata'at is not mentioned in the Quran in those words tells me that whatever they are translating that as is also not being mentioned by Allah in the Quran, and therefore it is the invention of some scholars, basically, who were attempting in their own inimitable way to explain what Allah has not explained, at least not in the manner that they are surmising. So this is actually a relatively and comparatively new venture as far as scholarship goes. And when I use the word scholarship, I don't want you to be afraid of that word because you don't see yourself as being one. I don't necessarily like the term in terms of using it for myself. I think it's been overly used and exploited by people who want the world to know that they know something that the world does not know. And they put it under the term scholarship, but the original meaning for scholar is just one who had advanced him or herself in a school. Schooler, scholars, it's just the same word. It only means those who have become advanced in terms of the information they were learning within that school setting. So Nunetics is actually a school of thought of sorts, but I, I don't like that term either, school of thought. I like the term school of thinking. And I believe that uh, what Imam W.D. Muhammad left was not a school of thought as such. It was also a school of continual thinking. Uh, he was attempting to provoke the wheels of the intellect, the human intellect, to continue to turn and revolve. And in the intellect revolving, in turn, it would become something that would be revolving and evolving, both simultaneously. So Imam Muhammad was about the evolution of the human being in all of the human being's facets. But I believe he understood being a fitra-based thinker, a nature-based thinker, that there's no such thing as evolution or evolution without a revolution, meaning a revolving. And uh, this is true in the nature of all things that grow. We have uh, evolution on the planet Earth in terms of the life forms, the plant life, the animal life, and the human life, they're all evolving. But the earth itself is revolving according to what a science is able to establish. And it is actually the revolutions taking place as an earth body that is responsible for the evolution that is taking place within the life forms. So if it were not for the revolutions, there would be no evolution. So if you want to see yourself as evolving within the knowledge of what the Quran is presenting as knowledge, then you have to first learn how to revolve. That means you have to constantly revisit information. So let's look at something very carefully within the word revolution or revolve. It's actually no different than the word reevaluate. That's what a revelation, uh, revolution is doing. It's re-evaluating its position, where it is, where it should be at a particular point. And it continues to revolve. That's movement. And all movement creates energy. That's what energy is. It is energy in motion. See? So I'm beginning the explanation of what we're getting ready to get into to let you know that many of you are going to be evolving in an understanding of the so-called abbreviated letters, but you, you won't grow in it and you won't evolve in it unless you choose consciously to create revolutions around the knowledge, around the information that I'm providing for you. And the way that you know that you're doing it successfully is that you yourself will eventually acknowledge in time and I believe in a short period of time, some of you are doing it already, you're going to acknowledge that you are evolving in your understanding of these so-called abbreviated letters because you're going to be able to explain them just like that. 
they're only letters, <laughs> not even ayat, they're letters. All right, so we're going to make this very nice and slow and simple and easy for you. But all things start out like the baby starts out when it's born, kicking and fussing and crying and bloody and you know all that kind of stuff. So don't worry about that. All right. The shedding of the blood that's going to take place in this class is the shedding of old ideas. That's the shedding of the blood. It's just going to be old ideas, stuff that you can actually live without. So don't feel bad about losing a little bit of blood during this particular special course. It'll be blood that you won't need anyway. The blood of these old extant ideas, these ideas that have been stymied, purposely stymied, so that your intellect will become stymied. Because the enemy of a manipulator's mind is a progressive mind. And if you choose to hold on to a progressive mind, you're going to become the number one enemy of all people whose purpose is to stymie your development. So I say that especially to those people who are not so much used to criticism from other people for what it is you say you believe or what it is you say you're involving yourself in as a study. I say don't worry about the criticizers of those who criticize. That's from the Quran. Don't worry about them. Imam Muhammad once said about the people who criticize his work, especially from uh, people from other places, other lands, overseas, and et cetera. He said, don't worry about what they think about what I think. He said, they are so far behind us that it'll take them a thousand years to catch up. That's a long time. So that's a heck of a jump that Allah has given us to be able to get ourselves together in terms of our involvement in the study. So don't be afraid of studying. Give yourself a certain amount of time every day, at least 30 minutes a day to studying this information and studying the corresponding verses from the Quran that will substantiate the position that we're taking based on what it is we're giving you as information. There's something else that needs to be continuously reinforced and that is that the Quran is a fitra-based book, fitra-based book. And all of you should be familiar with that term by now without me putting it on the piece of paper or on the board or whatever, right? You should know fitra by now. And I'm going to repeat a statement that Imam Muhammad has made concerning the fitra. And this is a very important uh, term and idea for us to understand in order to get benefit from the fitra. He said that you cannot benefit from the fitra until you become aware of the fitra, or he said, conscious of the fitra. He said, you will not be able to benefit from the fitra until you become conscious that there is a fitra. Now, listen to this beautiful connection. Now, these are my words. You will not benefit from the fitra-based understanding contained within the Quran until you first recognize and become conscious that the Quran contains fitra-based language. So just like you can go outside into your garden, like many of you do, and identify those growths and developments that are in your garden that you planted the seeds for in many cases, you can identify the tomatoes and the the carrots or whatever else you may have grown, different flowers and plants and medicinal herbs and those kinds of things. When you go in your garden, you can point to them right away. Okay, see that corner over there? That's where I'm growing my this, that, and the other. So, oh, see the middle of the garden here? This is where I keep my blah, blah, blah. So you know where everything is. As soon as you look in the garden, the garden for you is speciated now. I mean, it's, it's, it's all compartmentalized. But for the person just passing by the garden from outside of your house, and they look in there and they just see a bunch of flowers and green plants growing up out of the ground. They don't know that that's spinach or cauliflower or lettuce. <laughs> you understand? They have no clue. It just looks like a bunch of stuff. Well, that's how the Quran looks to most people who read it. It just looks like a bunch of words thrown together. It starts here, it might set off here, and then it starts talking about a new subject over there. Just like in your garden, the tomatoes might set off here, and then it might be asparagus over here and right next to it. 
and it looks inconsistent to people who have an untrained eye. So unless you have an eye that is trained to identify fitra-based products, you're not going to get a lot out of the growth of a person's garden because you don't know what to choose from. You don't even know what to look for. Same thing with the Quran. If you don't know what to look for, you see Alif Lam Mim, you just keep going because it means nothing to you because you don't know how to make the connection between those three signatures and the three signatures that they are representing in the fitra itself. You have to become more interested in the fitra. And I have mentioned something about the fitra that some of you, I'm sure, can compete, uh, can repeat back to me. What have I said are the two major features of the fitra? Anyone can answer that question. Two major features of the fitra. What are Form and function. Form and functionality. All right, Habiba, I heard you in there also, did I? Did I hear Habiba answering also, I think? That was me. That was Ezekiel? Okay, I thought I heard her. I thought I saw her phone. And it was Adib, Adib was in there too. Adib, I caught you loud and clear. Okay. You the captain of the boat, don't worry about that. I caught you. <laughs> But I'm going to ask Ezekiel to explain the difference between form and function. Form is the out, outer physical, outer physical layer of the uh, of the of the material. The functionality is the in the um, the mechanical or uh, or the uh, brain of the of the situation. We understand. That's perfectly fine and that's perfectly correct. All right. The form is the outer show. The uh, functionality is the inner compartments. Can you give an example by using a clock? Yes, sir. Uh, the hands on the clock, it would be the form and the uh, mechanism in the inside of the clock is the functionality. Okay, give me some other parts of the form, Adib. Let me call on Adib. Give me some other parts of the form of a clock besides the hands. The 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 uh, other things, the form of the clock, or you said the hands. You had you see the uh, uh, the face. You you see the uh, uh, a, a little box where 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 it goes around where the hands could, could could evolve, you could push it. Anyone else want to contribute to that? What else do you see when you look at the face of the clock? Bashir? You see the dots, the small dots for the minutes and the bigger dots for the hour. Okay. Are there any other hands on the clock? Yes. You have the what second else? hand and you have the hour hand. All uh, right. Yeah. Very good. All right. What about the shape of a clock? Is that a part of the form of a clock? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it right. could be all, round. All, yeah, all right. Are all clocks round? No. No. Oh. All right. <laughs> so they come in multiple shapes, just like human beings. Some of us are skinny. Some of us are fat. Some of us are tall. Some of us are short. Some of us are, you know, we come in all shapes. Does a clock come in one particular color? Okay, so a clock comes in multiple colors, right? All right. Yes. So the clock is pretty much like the human being because we come in all of these different varieties also, but if the functionality of the clock is not working, then you won't get what you came there for, and that is the correct time of day. All right, so the world will not get the correct time of day out of human life until humans become functional. And the reason why the world is going to hell in a handbasket as we speak, on the most part, is because we are not operating based on the functionality that Allah created us to function by. The reason why the Muslim world is in the mess up that they're in is because they've lost the meanings for functional terms in the Quran. And they have put the emphasis on terms that refer to the form, what we call ritual or the ritualistic aspects of the Quran. 
So when it comes to form, they're all there. The Salat, the ritual, Allahu Akbar, put your hands up here, put your hands on the chest, put your hands down, go down, kneel, get up, bow, make sense that, get up. The form is still there. But what those forms are supposed to be suggesting to the human intellect for the intellect's advancement, that's long gone. That means that the Muslim population on the most part have become a dysfunctional population. And it's the same thing with the Christian population. Believe it or not, it's even the same thing for the Jewish population. They have become people who have relegated themselves to formalistic or formal, formalized religion. Their religions have become formalized. And the Jews have formalized their religion so much that they don't believe anybody outside of their ethnic group can get into it unless they're born through a Jewish form called the Jewish mother. But there are other, uh, underneath the cover and behind the wall, behind the scenes beliefs that they have that have caused them to become totally dysfunctional in, in the world. And I'm going to tell you what accounts for dysfunctional people on planet Earth. That is that if they disappeared as a people tomorrow, the world wouldn't miss them. Now, you might say, well, that's not true for the Jews because they're they controlling all that money. <laughs> Somebody else would just pick up all that money and keep running, just like on the football field. You fumble the ball, somebody in your team or on your team is going to come behind you and just pick up the ball and try and make it to the goal line. If uh, the majority of African Americans were to disappear, a lot of people on this planet wouldn't shed a tear. Although the world still would become a bit dysfunctional because there are so many things that the African American contributes to spirit-wise and soul-wise that they, they'd miss us, but I think they've done enough to capture the spirit of the African-American so much so that they probably wouldn't miss us either. Because <laughs> now, now they can dance and sing. You understand what I'm saying? They can do all those things that they used to look at us and go, wow, how did James Brown do that? But now they have James Browns among themselves. See? The Mexicans are coming up. They're bringing up the rear now. And they're able to do a lot of things that they were not able to do 20 years ago, 50 years ago. They're doing them now. They're riding around in vehicles that were unheard of them riding around in 40 years ago. They were all packed into a, a truck going to do some work. And now they're pushing Beamers and Escalades and some of the cars I've never even been in. You find our Mexican brothers and sisters proudly behind the wheel, legitimately, of those vehicles. But again, all of that speaks to the progress of a people who have been concentrating on more than just their form. They've been concentrating on what's happening inside of themselves. So keep that in mind. I'm making that connection to show you the importance of understanding functionality in Quranic language, not just reading about forms, formula formulations in the Quran. When you hear the term masjid in the Quran, you just think about this physical building. See, when you hear the term Muslim in the Quran, you think about these people walking around in kufis and khimars. You got to come out of that mind because that's not what the Quran is talking about. When you read about al-Baqarah, it's not talking about a heifer like you have in the farm or on the farm. It's talking about a way that you operate inside of yourself that can become dysfunctional and in need of repair, or in this case, slaughtering. There are some personality types that you can't remedy. You can't fix them. You have to slaughter them, like Musa was instructed to tell his people to slaughter the heifer. Sometimes things become so bad for a life form that there's no saving it. That's true for most animals. If most animals lose a foot, you have to kill the whole animal. If the human being loses a foot or two feet or two feet and two arms, the human being is supposed to still be functional because of the way Allah created the human intellect to function. But if there's no functionality in the intellect, then the human being loses all hope, becomes disparate. And along with the loss of the arms and the legs, the human being now wants to lose the life. And they might commit suicide or just be despondent for the rest of their lives because something inside has become dysfunctional. So the Quran was revealed in order to allow the human being to come into the primo level of human functionality. So remember these things as we get into this lesson today. 
Whatever you're not going to understand today from the notes or from the lessons or from anything that I say, don't worry about anything that you're not understanding. These lessons are not intended for you to understand when you receive them. These lessons are intended for you to understand as you continue to revisit them, reevaluate them, cause a revolution, a revolution inside of your intellect. Turn it around, like they say, turn it around in your mind. And as you continue to turn it around, just like a good farmer who turns over the soil, see if you leave the so if you leave the soil alone, even after you've planted the seed, you might not get any growth because all kinds of circumstances are going to impact that soil. But you have to turn the soil over and get some fresh topsoil. The topsoil is supposed to be glistening when you turn it over, you see? The seed can be under there, but the soil can still become dry and non-respondent. But if you turn it over with what they call a hole, I know some of y'all brothers heard that word. You, you've heard that word before. <laughs> if you want to turn over that soil, you got to sometimes use a hole. <laughs> oh, man. This world's language is just too much for me. All right? Yeah. And uh, other times you use a spade, you know. And that's how they've been using our holes and spades for as long as we've been in this country, right? You got to stop letting them use you like that, all right? To turn over their soil so that their souls can prosper, all right? We're going to stop doing that. We're going to develop our own tools so that we can take charge of our own lives. I'm going to pull up my notes. Stand by. Okay. So again, we're going to be dealing with these so-called abbreviated letters called the huruf el muqatta'at. Huruf means letters and muqatta'at means that which is cut into sections. Cut, you can hear cut in that pronunciation. Others have translated it as the disjointed letters. So it's the same as you having all of these joints in your body that allow your body the free flow of movement and having someone separate out all of your joints. So if you separate out all of the joints, then the body can't move. And if you separate out all of the things that these disjointed so-called abbreviated letters are contributing to the Quranic logic, if you separate out those letters, then your intellect can't move in the direction that Allah wants it to move in because your joints are not operating with each other, in cooperation with each other. So these are not disjointed letters. These are not cut up pieces of logic. These are pieces of logic that are consistent with the surah in which you find those letters in. So with that said, let us do what we do best, inshallah. I connected these ideas last week to the zodiac. And the zodiac is simply the language of interpreting energy and sine waves, energy and sine waves. Every sign, and for those of you who might be on the phone, we're spelling that S-I-N-E, not S-I-G-N. Every sine wave follows the same pattern, meaning the pattern of energy and sine waves. It begins at the point of the equator. So now we're going to go into some astrology and astronomy terms. This energy and these sine waves, they begin at the point of the Earth's equator. And that is the point of the two equinoxes. The word equinox means equal nights. Nox is night. Equi or equi is equal. Equal nights. These take place in the spring 
and in the fall. So let's get a picture of this. This would be the earth. I'm not here to argue with you about whether the earth is flat or round or oblong or egg shaped. I don't care about all of that. <laughs> if we don't know anything else, we know that it contains continents. So let's begin with the continents. So if we were to open up the earth and spread it out flat, you would see this picture. So we said that the equinoxes are at the two points that are now called spring season and fall or autumn season. This red line that you're seeing down the middle or across the middle is the point of the equinox or the equinoxes. This one over here on the left symbolizes the spring equinox and over here on the right symbolizes the autumn or the fall equinox. Notice how autumn sounds a little bit like Adam. It's consonantally connected to A-D-A-M. The T and the D are interchangeable, as you know. So autumn is also Adam. The N in autumn is silent. So it's autumn and Adam. And they speak about Adam by using the term the fall of Adam. You see the connection between the fall and Adam? All right. So in the Quran, these two points are typified by these two archetypes. We know them from the Quran as Ibrahim. The Christians and the Jews would say Abraham. Or Abraham, the Jews would say. We say Ibrahim. And Ibrahim as an archetype. Now we're talking symbols and archetypes. As an archetype, Ibrahim symbolizes the zodiacal symbol or signature or sign of Aries. And we spoke a little bit about this last, a lot actually about this last week. Aries, but we didn't connect it to Ibrahim. So I'm showing you how the Quran treats the subject of the zodiac. And I told you last week that there's a whole surah called the zodiacal signs. So it's not like uh, uh, people are inserting their zodiac ideas into the Quran. No, Allah has inserted the zodiacal information in the Quran and it's for us to begin to extract it, but do it in the way that has been um, prepared for us by Allah himself and not by the zodiac mad scientists of the world. This is Allah speaking. This is not us speaking. And this is not the new age people and the people who want to read your, you know, your chart and all. that's not what this is. This is simply a matter of as above, so below. Whatever Allah put out there in the universe, in the cosmos, he has also uh, put those same qualities and uh, energies, if you will, within the human being, him and herself. So we're identifying what's out there so that we will know better how we are to function in here. In here, we look at how they're formed, we look at how they function, and then we equate that form and function with the form and function within the human being, your personal fitra. That's what we're looking to expand upon, our personal fitra and an understanding of such. So Ibrahim, wherever you read about Ibrahim in the Quran, you're reading about the zodiacal signature that's related to the energy called Aries. And Aries is always representing the beginnings of things. He's the first. The initiator. Aries is the first signature in the Zodiac. It begins with Aries and it goes 12 steps all the way until it reaches Pisces, which is the 12th signature. So it's from Aries all of the way to Pisces. We also have the archetype called Muhammad in the Quran. And as an archetype, Muhammad symbolizes the zodiacal signature of Libra, L-I-B-R-A, Libra. And Obviously, the word libra and the word liberal and liberator 
are related. And Muhammad is referred to as the liberator. In the Quran, Allah says that one of the reasons he sent Muhammad was to liberate humanity. Liberate them from the unfair bonds, the slavery that human beings have been put into on various levels of slavery, not just the physical chains, but more importantly, the mental and the spiritual chains, the habits. Hmm? Yeah, all of those chains of slavery, Muhammad and whatever Muhammad represents and whatever Muhammad brought with him, and that is the Quran, as we know. It is intended to liberate you. So if you're still in the bondage after having the Quran, it's because your teacher ain't worth shit, excuse the expression, or you yourself are not a good student of the Quran. Ain't no other reasons for it. Or maybe your teacher doesn't know. And that still fits into the first category that I mentioned. Step down and stop being a teacher if you don't know. All right? So. Let's get one of the females in the class to, re to, to repeat back to me very simple things that I just said about Aries and Libra and what it's related to and who it is related to. Any of the female voices out there? Hello, Ms. Yeah. Ms. Bangina Hamid and Augusta Georgia. Wa alaikum salam, instructor. How are you? Said that they're both related to Ibrahim and Muhammad. Which ones are related to which? Ibrahim is Aries, the ram, the initiator. And Muhammad is Libra, the liberator, or the balance. Perfectly stated. Thank you very much. Well, that was mu music to my ears. Yes? I don't want you to feel as though I'm like blanking out. I'm steadily talking, but I didn't. I had the mute thing on. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna still give you a chance to answer the question. Okay. Oh, you want me to? Uh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Ibrahim is related to Aries, uh, the initiator, the beginning, the first. Uh -huh. uh, Muhammad is uh, uh, indicative of Libra, the balance, the liberator. The uh, and he's also considered that like not not only the liberator but uh, it's related to liberal. Hmm. Yeah, somebody give me a different name for liberty. Male or female doesn't matter who answers. Liberty. Yeah. Freedom. What's an alternative? Freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Freedom. Who gave us freedom? Who gave us that? Gary. Well, Gary White. Gary. Yeah. All right, so let's look at this word. You have uh, liberty. Give me liberty or give me death. Remember that one? Right, those types And of then you have, uh, you have freedom. They're related, but they're not the same. Does anyone know what the basic difference between those two words are according to the way the words themselves are constructed? I'm going to ask Gary if he wants to take a little poke at it first before we move on to others. It's built into both words. What level of independence they both represent? It has something to do with the freedom of the mind, or which one? Uh, freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and how, how do you know? How do you know that? Well, breaking down the word, I guess freedom. Dumb is the dome. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to be, I guess, independent in the mind. Absolutely. That's, that's how I look at it. That's how you should look at it, because that's absolutely correct, even though you will not find that in the modern standard dictionary. That was a meaning, actually, that was introduced to us by Imam W.D. Muhammad, so it won't appear in the dictionary until we write it. But it's clearly oh. saying free dome or free dominion, even. And the dome of the human body is this head, right? 
Yes. So part of the brain. Gary Wayne is correct. He is 1000% correct. So Gary explained to me what the difference is between that and liberty. Now you got to be a little bit more sophisticated to know where liberty comes from because it's not from the English language. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to ask others who know already or who think they know, you can just chime in. It may be, um, yeah, liberty is more, I guess, with dealing with the government outside of yourself. And here's where, I guess it's a French, maybe from the French. Liberty. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we can even shortcut it better than that. And I guess that being, uh, I guess it's the word liberal comes from that and, um, and then you got the sign of Libra. So okay, well, Libra is the sixth sign out of twelve. So where does that put Libra? In between, in between, a balance. In, in the middle. In the twelve. Listen in the carefully. Middle. Listen in carefully. The middle. Listen to me carefully. Mm -hmm. It puts a Libra smack dab in the middle. And what's another word for middle? In English, begins with a K sound. Mm. Starts with a C, but it sounds like a K, and we use it to mean the middle of something. Cent oh, not center. Good guess, but that's the S sound. How about crux? No. Mm -mm. What do you call the middle of an apple? Core. Thank Core. you, Bashir. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Bashir. <laughs> My man, right? Core. Then that's where the seeds are. That's right. Now, listen to, listen to the logic. In the Arabic language, the word for the core is what? Center. It's right here. It's in here. Oh, uh, the heart. The soul of place. Yeah. The, oh, soul. The soul. No, no, no. You called it first the right. You called it right the first time. The, the heart. heart. The heart. So now, what are the two words for heart in Arabic? Kalb. Kalb. Q A L B. Mm -hmm. What's the other one? Kalb. Mm -hmm. ah. The other one is a little. Is a little the other one's gonna be a little fuzzy because you're not used to hearing it. Although I've taught on it many times. There's the word kalb, which is scoff, lamb, bait, mm -hmm. and there is the word lub. Oh, yes. yes. Right, Adi, it comes to you now, right? So yes, that's yes. lamb, bait, bait, and that's the true word meaning for heart. Kalb means the core of anything, not just the body, okay? But lube is referring to the physical heart in the physical chest that pumps blood up to the brain, and then it loops around until it goes down to even reach your pinky toe and come back up. So it's always performing a loop movement of blood, looping, coming back to the heart's chambers for purification, going back up to the brain and then going back down around the body. So the word lub is what it gave us the English word loop, L-O-O-P. Uh -huh. ah. All right. Now with P and B being interchangeable, the P in lub, pardon me, the B in lub became the P in loop. Lub, loop. But it maintained its LB connection when it got to the term lib and liberate and liberal and liberty. So the freedom in this case, Gary Wayne gave us the freedom of the intellect, the freedom of the mind by saying intellect or freedom, the intellect. But liberty is the free movement of the heart. Instructor, can I interject something? Certainly can. You're associating freedom with liberty, and you want to know what the connection is. Liberty, I think, comes from the word liber or 
libel. Same thing, libel, libel. Mm -hmm. so with self responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what happens when the heart stops becoming responsible for the body? In that line. Flat line. Flat line. Give me liberty or give me. Give me death. Death. Mate. Thomas Payne. Tom Payne. So and that's right. So Ahmed Hassan, he's right on the point also. See, I'm showing you how no matter how far you try to stretch out to grab some other meaning for it, it's going to come right back to the original fitra meaning that are captured in the letters themselves. And that's the L B. The L B. If you don't allow people to be humanly free, to feel the way they need to feel, and to think the way they were designed to think, what you're doing is you're killing the natural motivation in human nature. So you'll have bodies around here as slaves, but you won't have any real true human life because the life that was intended to occupy the heart is vacant. And the life that was intended to motivate and activate the brain is also missing in action. So all you have now are forms, as we mentioned earlier. I don't know if Ahmed was here for that, but all you have are forms, but you have no functionality because the functionality is in the human heart and in the human brain. But there are many kinds of deaths. Made. Yes. So this one is it, it, talking about how we die spiritually. And also in that word, in, in I, I, I got up libel and liability, the LB. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Liability means you're responsible because those two major things are responsible for your life. When they fail on you, you can't go but so much further. If the brain fails on you, you can still live, but you become a vegetable. And if the heart fails on you, you can forget it altogether. This is what the reason for these entanglements that they keep treat kind of put on 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 us as a people. You can't talk about critical race theory. You can't study quote unquote this type of history because. First of all, we don't want you to teach that to our children. They don't need to know. And what you're using is, is worth, worthless anyway. More entanglement for those who, who can be entangled. Well, I'm going to ask for this class's purposes that we not bring in any yes. connection to yes. anything political. Listen to what yes. I'm saying, because yes. that yes. can go somewhere else. So yes, yes. Yeah, we don't want to draw those lines in the sand with people, all right? Some are for it, some are against it, doesn't matter. We're talking, let's keep the subject on yes. what the human needs. Yes, are. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, not the political needs, not the, you know, all that other stuff. Yeah. You know, the human needs, the human heart needs to be free. And no, Muhammad the prophet was assigned to assist us in freeing the human heart and the human well, body. Well, Bashi is not too far off point. He could be 100% on point. I ask that we not introduce any political conversation. Yeah. I don't care how right or wrong it is. We don't want to go because other people get activated and they get, they get, you know, they they get motivated by, you know, Good. the red, the blue. That we ain't don't want to protest. Do. No, we don't want to do. Not, that. We can do that on another on, a, on another forum. We can do that yes. on the Sunday class, but that's not what today's class is for. We have yes. to yes, really stay focused, laser focused, so that we can get through these letters. Because as you can see. We're almost, we're almost an hour into the class and we really haven't gotten to the notes yet. You see what page that says down there? It says one. <laughs> Got it. All right, Bashir. Right. And this is just me picking your brains to see where you are. So you have to answer me so I know where to go from here and how much to give you. So don't be afraid to answer. This is all good for all of us, for you and for me. It's all good. So don't be afraid. The only dumb answer is one that's not answered. All right. The only stupid question is one that you refuse to ask. I, I got a, I have a question. Uh, yes, Bilal. sir. Go right ahead. Mm -hmm. How does, how does the, you know, dealing with um, gravity and stuff, how does the heart go up to the brain and, you know, curb down or mm -hmm. go down and then goes all the way to the feet and then come back up again? Yeah, that's a beautiful question. Mm -hmm. In other words, how does the blood flow 
as heavy as blood is supposed to be, how does it flow from the heart up against gravity? Yes. And then down the body and then back up. Right. In a looping fashion. I'm going to tell you how, and then I'm going to leave it for a future Sunday class to explain the rest of it. You ready? Yes. Now, this is going to mess some of you up. I hope you're ready to be messed up tonight. <laughs> because there's no such thing as gravity. Wow. Now, if you don't remind me to speak on it in the Sunday class, then I'll just leave it alone. It's one of those other unnecessary pieces of knowledge that I just happen to have in my back pocket for those who, who inquire. Wow. And I can prove it to you 10 different ways. There's no such thing as gravity as they teach it in their schools. Okay, we had it for it. <laughs> Allah gives you hints of it. He talks about the birds as they fly with their wings outstretched. They still fly, he said, without even flapping. What's holding them up there? Allah speaks about pillars that hold up the planets invisible. He said, although you can't see them, they're pillars that are holding all of those things up. Is that gravity? Is it working against gravity? These pillars? What are these pillars? You see how much further we have to go in understanding the Quran on the scientific level? It's way beyond the sciences of this world. And you wow. have to be a dedicated scientific mind to even go into those areas. Because you might get out there and you might not know how to come back. So would you say this is more of the quantum realm that... The entire cosmos is quantum. Okay. Okay. From the molecule right. on up. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I'm cool it's with all that quantum. Answer. But again, yes, there are people right now, there, hold on, there are people here on this class who don't know what quantum means. And if I were okay. to start going that, right, that okay. route, okay. Okay. you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. the same thing yeah. about the quantum theories and all of that that I'm saying yes. about the yes, politics. Yes. <laughs> and physics. Wonderful, and... They're wonderful subjects, but yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Right. this is not the class for that. You have any other As questions such. that are going to lead down yes. that corridor? Hold off on them or ask me yes. in an email, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be more than happy to answer you. Okay, can we move on? Consensus? Yes, that's what I wanted right. to say. Can we get back on focus, please? We never been out of focus. Okay, <laughs> on the topic that we're on. We've always been on the topic. All day. Never mind. <laughs> all day. All you day. Mess with all right. Me. Here we go. So. We were talking about the two points of balance at the equator, right? And I pointed those two points out as Aries and Libra represented archetypally. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. As Ibrahim for Aries and Muhammad for Libra, All right? So these two points of balance, they balance at the equator and then proceed to move out to their wave amplitude at the two respective tropics. The northern tropic, that's the word I want you to concentrate on now, tropic. The northern tropic is called Cancer as a signature or a sign in the zodiac. And the southern tropic is called the Capricorn as a signature in the zodiac. So I've introduced several concepts to you that I'm going to ask you to repeat back to me before we conclude. Uh, you got to lock in to Ibrahim Muhammad and what two signs they are connected to. And you also have to lock in these two tropics. One is called the Northern Tropic. And what's the sign for that? Anyone can answer? Cancer. Yes. And the other is called the Southern Tropic and it's called what? Capricorn. Very good. These are your homework questions that you need to study. Not that I'm going to ask you for homework, but... This is the homework you should assign yourself if you want to understand what we're talking about. Now, look at these pictures very carefully. On the left, you're going to see what might appear to be a complicated picture of what's going on in the universe. You'll see autumnal equinox. Remember, autumnal is fall. So that's another way of saying the fall equinox. Down to its left, you're going to see the winter solstice. To its right, you're going to see the vernal equinox. So there's the autumnal 
the fall equinox, and then there's the vernal or the spring equinox. They're just using fancy, you know, scientific terms. And then further up on the right, you're going to see summer solstice. So there are two solstices. Who can tell me what they are? Do it quickly. Winter and summer. Summer and winter. Thank you very much. And there are two equinoxes. Somebody tell me where they are. Optimal and vernal. Very good. Now listen carefully with your Quranic brain. You're going to get this right away. Let me ask you this question first. Who knows? Not guessing but you already know the answer to this. Who knows what the word solstice means? It's built into the word, that's your hint. The soul. Sun something, so. Sun. Yeah, sun oh, what? Oh, ice. Sun. No, no, not ice, but good guess. Who stands? Yes, yes, who said that? Ahmed. Okay, yeah, yeah. The souls stand, where it's standing or where it is stationed. Souls, this means the soul's station, meaning where it is. You follow? Okay. Who knows what language S-O-L comes from, where it means S-U-N? What language is that? Latin. Is it Greek? Yes, Latin. Oh, Latin. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, we're making progress. So there are two points in the revolution of this planetary life. Two points at which the earth experiences solstices, where the sun is actually standing still. Do you know that twice a year the sun stands still for approximately three and a half days? Did anybody know that? Has anybody heard that? No, sir. Yeah. All right. So these are the I things. I think that I have. You purchase the replay. You purchase the replay. You press pause at these points, and then you go into your study. And so let me find out what he's talking about. And then you Google what I'm asking you. Are there three days during the year when the sun stands still? <laughs> or just Google what is the solstice? What is the summer solstice? What is the winter solstice? But you do know, if you don't know anything else by now, it has to do with the sun's station. Solstice. The sun's stand, where the sun is making a stand or standing. Now, compared to the equinoxes, we have what again? To what? Pardon me. I gave you the word. Compared we have to two solstices. Solstice. <laughs> right. We have two equinox and two solstices. That's right. And what does equinox mean again? Equal night. Yeah. And it actually represents equal days and nights because there are two points during the year mm -hmm. when the day has a perfect 12 hours daylight or daytime followed by a perfect 12 hours nighttime. Those are what we call the equinoxes. Everyone understanding me? It is when yes. the time of day is divided evenly <laughs> and equally into two parts. One happens in the springtime during the spring equinox or the vernal equinox, pardon me, during the spring, yeah, the springtime or the vernal equinox. The other one happens when? During which autumn. equinox? In the winter. Autumn, autumn the winter. equinox. Nope, nope. Autumn. autumn. The winter equinox. Nope. Autumn equinox. Winter is solstice. Look, look at your page in front of you. Summer. Okay. Autumn. And we got to get used to the difference winter. between solstice and equinox. Okay. Solstice. Vernal equinox. There you go. Vernal equinox. There you go. Okay. So they are two equal equinoxes. Now, in the Quran, Allah uses a word to describe both Ibrahim and Muhammad. Who knows what that word is?
And Allah says that this thing he's saying about them is hasana. Amen. No. They both are characterized by this word. It's an important word in the Quran that the Muslim world of scholarship has overlooked for over a thousand years. But Imam Muhammad brought it to our attention. He said, we're not supposed to be focusing so much on something called Muhammad's sunnah. We're supposed to be focusing on his. Uswa. Uswa. Yes. Ah. Uswa. <laughs> I had to go read and go back. We're connecting this to, to astro astronomical science now. Keep your, keep your science thinking cap on. The Quran speaks about two uswas. One is Ibrahim's uswa. The other one is Muhammad's uswa. And both of them are called shasana. Good. Now, if they, if they are equal... Tell me what the word uswa means. Perfect example. Ah. Who, who said balance? I said perfect I balance. Do. Perfect balance. Perfect example. Okay. No, listen carefully. Listen carefully. It doesn't mean example. Okay. It means what I believe Habib gave us. Mm -hmm. Uswa is from siwa, which means to be level, even, balanced. And that's exactly what the equinoxes are, aren't they? Yes. And there are two of them, right? Perfect balance. Yeah. One yeah. comes You're in right. the spring. Yes. yes. And I told you that that spring one is to be equated with the archetype Ibrahim, Aries. The yes, ram, yes, the beginning, yes. the initiator, all of those things. And that the equal one on the other side is to be equated with Muhammad, the liberator. You get it? The balance. Mm -hmm. yeah. The one who brings the justice. That's what the liberator does. Yes. So Muhammad is associated with justice. The Quran's main theme. Even more than Allah's mercy, the Quran emphasizes Allah's justice. Be just. See, you're closer to Allah, Allah says, when you're being just by people, not just merciful, when you're being just. So these are principles of action that Allah has put in the Quran for us to emulate. And until we understand that these are principles in the fitrah, until you can describe how Allah has clocked justice into the fitrah, you won't be able to use that justice in your legal system, in your family circle, oh, yeah. in your community well, life, because you won't be using it correctly if you don't know how Allah is using it in nature. Sometimes we look at nature and we see things and we say that's not just, that Allah would allow the wolf to eat the rabbit. <laughs> But what you don't understand is that if you follow that trail long enough, you're going to see the perfect balancing out of nature. And if you stop the wolf from eating the rabbit, you're going to have an overabundance of rabbits that are going to cause you more problems than if you had just left the wolf alone to do its mm -hmm. fitra thing. Okay? That's what makes Allah the one who knows better than us. We keep trying to correct what we think are the mistakes of God. See, that's human arrogance that does that. Let's continue. All right. So what am I saying with this whole scenario I just painted for you? I'm saying that the two uswas, one of Ibrahim and one of Muhammad, are both perfect, perfectly calculated in the construction of the earth and what it does in its equinoxes. And I'm also saying that there are going to be two major ideas related to the sunnah that are also typified in the sun stis. Remember, solstice means the sun's movements or lack thereof. 
where the sun is actually stationed. And Allah says that, he says, let there be no change in the sunnah of Allah. Ain't nothing wishy-washy there that you can play is with. Is that 30, 30 No, that's the fitrah okay. of Allah. Okay. So here's a part of your homework. It's Google where the sunnah of Allah is mentioned in the Quran. You're going to find it about 14 different times. Although you never learned it from your imam in your masjid, I can bet you. You learned about the sunnah of Muhammad, and that's not mentioned in the Quran. But I'm sure none of your muftis, imams, scholars, ulema, they stay away from the topic of the sunnah of Allah because they know if you learn about the sunnah of Allah, you're going to start asking about the sunnah of Muhammad and how it compares with the sunnah of Allah. And if Allah obviously has the greater sunnah of the two, why are you teaching us and beating in our heads the whole idea of a sunnah of Muhammad? And that's not mentioned in the Quran. Whereas Allah's sunnah is mentioned in the Quran. How come you need to ask your imams this when you go to the masjid? I'm not trying to start trouble. I'm trying to get you out of some future trouble. Ask your imam. You got to be bold enough to challenge your leaders and your teachers and your scholars and say, well, where is the sunnah of Muhammad mentioned in the Quran? And is the sunnah of Allah mentioned in the Quran? Now, if they don't know, again, they have disqualified themselves as Muslim scholars and Muslim teachers. If they don't know that Allah and his sunnah is mentioned as sunnah to law in the Quran, in those words over 14 different times, 14 different places in the Quran, if they don't know that, they are no longer qualified to teach you. So ask them, where is it? But this is why they don't tell you that it says that. They just keep translating it as the way of Allah. There's no, there's no changing the way of Allah. You see, the path of Allah. They got all these slick ways of translating that into English when they can just say the sunnah of Allah. But again, if you're sitting there reading your Quran and you say the sunnah of Allah never changes, Allah has a sunnah. So how does his sunnah compare with Muhammad's sunnah? Okay, let me go find Muhammad's sunnah in the Quran. See what Allah says. You stop looking, you'll be looking forever because it ain't in there. But the uswa of Muhammad is in there. So the next question to your mullahs and muftis and sheikhs and shakers is, if the uswa of Muhammad is mentioned and the sunnah is not, why are you teaching me about the sunnah of Muhammad and never telling me anything about Muhammad's uswa? These are the questions that are actually going to reinvigorate the Muslim mind in this new age, this, this uh, age of Aquarius, as they call it, the water bearer. The, the age when all the purity of the water and its cleansing agents is just pouring out all over the world. It's not just from what I'm saying. It's all over the world now. But there's not the flood of it that's coming. There's a flood of what the same thing I'm talking about. There's a flood coming behind us. I think Imam Muhammad represented the first spigot. You know, when you first put that little thing in the, in the barrel of water and you just turn it and that little piece comes out just so you can get you a sip. That barrel is about to explode. And a lot of Muslim leaders are going to have to answer a lot of difficult and impossible questions. And that's when you're going to see a new turnover of leadership coming from people like you and me. You'll be the new leaders in Al-Islam. That's what Imam Muhammad was preparing you for, but not to lead as a black person or a Bilalian. He, that, that's not what he was preparing you for. If it was, he would have kept that term in vogue. Imam Muhammad introduced a term that I don't hear any Muslim leader speaking on, except me and now you. He said, you are being conditioned to step into the role of cosmic man. Sounds like a comic book character, doesn't it? Yeah, and our young people should be the first ones to, to design a, a, a cartoon, a, a comic book like that. I think somebody did start that over in New York. Cosmic man. He said it goes beyond race man, ethnic man, linguistic man, continental man. He said it, it goes beyond earth. 
He's like, Imam Muhammad's words, cosmic man goes beyond earth. And it envelops the entire cosmos. That's the level that we're supposed to be thinking on. And that's the level that these letters are attempting to bring the human intellect up to, into, and beyond. So when I tell you Aleph represents Aries, and Aries is a cosmic signature, I'm attempting to do with you the job that Imam Muhammad started in calling you cosmic man, but not having enough time in this earthly life to follow up on. Let's continue. So you have two solstices, which I'm identifying with sunna. See the word sun in sunna? The word yes. sunna is from a word that means to become bright. Doesn't that match the sun and what it does? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's from the verb sana, S-A-N-A, -A, and also S-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, sanna. That's where the word sunna comes from, and it means to become bright. And that's where they get the English word sun. They get it from sunna and sana and sanitation. When you clean something, it becomes lightened and brightened. All right. All right. And then you have the two equinoxes, as I said, which equal the two uswas, one of Ibrahim. That's the spring equinox that begins the life that brings about the growth. And the other one is the fall equinox that takes us out of the light and into the beginnings of darkness. If you want to know why the secret society minds of this world keep painting Muhammad the prophet as a bad guy, it's because they're misinterpreting the symbolism. And even some of them have gone as far as to say that Muhammad is really just like a veiled version of the devil because they're reading the symbolism through tainted eyes. They don't know how to read symbolism. They think since he comes in the period of Libra and the fall is when the night hours begin to expand and grow, right? That's when the night hours become more lengthy than the day hours. It begins in the fall and then fall, right? turns into winter, right? And then it gets stuff gets dark and cold and it's dark mm -hmm. early, like it is, you know, like like we're experiencing now. It gets dark at six o'clock and doesn't get light again until seven in the morning, you know, that kind of stuff. So they began to associate Muhammad knowing that he's in the Libra setting of this graduation that I'm talking about. They mistakenly saw darkness as evil. And because he comes at the onset of darkness, if you listen to him, it's going to bring you into darkness. And that's why they keep battling against the Muslim mind, because they believe that the Muslims are from Satan. And that the Quran is a book from Satan. Because they don't understand the Quran and they don't understand the symbolism. You'll run across that as you continue to study. But let's move forward here. So you can see. Uh, hmm? Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, it's doing, uh, doing the darkness uh, that uh, most of our, the healing is done in our bodies. And it's also, uh, uh, it's in darkness uh, that the uh, pineal gland uh, is uh, uh, activated more. Mm -hmm. The other time. Excellent points. Excellent points. And it is also in darkness, according to the botanists, the people who study plant life, that the plants experience their greatest growth overnight in the dark. Yes. Yeah. That's why, you know, you wake up and you look at the plant that you have on the windowsill and you go, wow, look how much taller that plant got overnight. I just looked at it last night. Because the real growth happens in the dark. See, the dark is not evil, like we've been told. Isn't it also allegorical to thief in the night? Well, it's connected to a lot of different ideas about the okay, darkness. Okay. Right. Yeah, but the, which the Quran clears up because the word for darkness is related to the word for oppression. Ah, okay. Yeah. So when somebody's oppressing you, they're keeping you out of the light. 
Yes. So you can't grow. But Allah uses the fitra darkness for growth purposes. Allah says he creates you in three wombs of darkness. Triple darkness. Uh, triple darkness. Yeah. Yeah. You remember those teachings? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. That's how we look at that. I see some hands up. Habiba, did you have something to say before we move, on, move forward? Thank you, William. That was an ex excellent set of points. I was thinking about something else as far as the, the sun standing still for a certain period of time. I'm sending it to you uh, to you in the text because there's a lot of ground that you're trying to cover. And I don't mm -hmm. want to mess up with what you're doing. It's okay. okay. All right. I appreciate that. And you know, in the Bible, it says that... Uh, I think it was Joshua who made the sun stand still. I think it was Joshua in the Bible. It says Joshua made the sun stand still. That's equinox. Yeah. <laughs> we naturally have that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We just came aware of that. Exactly. The more science you come into, the more connections you'll be able to make. All right, so we have something called wave amplitude. And this line here, if you're looking at it in terms of the planet that I just showed you, planet Earth, just connect that wavy line to what happens up and down this central line. See? This is the, this is the equinox line. Yeah. Equator, mm -hmm. equinox, equal nights on both sides of this line. That's the same as this line down here in the wave amplitude. And the seasons that are taking place throughout the year are taking place across that straight line, but above the line, Aries, Taurus, pardon me, yeah, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, et cetera, et cetera, going all the way, and then going under. There are six, there are six signs above the line, and there are six signs beneath the line. Six signs above the line, six signs beneath the line. The signs above the line in the Quran are called day. The signs beneath the line are called night. And there's nothing evil about them. They just offer advantages to certain opportunities that Allah wants us to come into. Most of the ones above the line are uh, connected to intellectual and spiritual progress. Most of the ones beneath the line are connected to material and carnal pleasures and progress. And the human being was created to operate based on both ebbs and flows, both of them. Just like beneath the heart chakra, there are three lower energies. And above the heart chakra, which is the middle chakra, there are three higher energies. You follow? Same thing. Same thing. Balance. Now, if, if you look, that's right. And Allah says, keep the balance, the mizan, right? Keep the balance. Now, when you look at this, this is obviously the archetypal serpent that scriptures are speaking about, the snake. That's what it is. It's the snake in the garden. The garden is the middle chakra, the green chakra, the garden chakra. And you have energies that are traveling above it, and you have en en uh, uh, energies that also travel beneath it. Give me just one moment. So is the snake traveling to and fro? Well, no, that's said of Satan himself in the Bible. That Satan, what? it was asked a question, where you going and he says oh up and down to and fro but that's what it means yeah that movement of the wave absolutely that can be, but that could be yeah. the movement of two moving to and fro from the line the fact, yeah the fact yeah it. yeah so habiba makes a good point here so let me clear it up now she says that uh 
you're sharing that the sun isn't actually standing still. Earth and the axis of the planet give the impression of the sun not moving. The sun, although it rotates, it doesn't revolve. That's absolutely correct. Now, understand this also about fitra based information. Remember, there's form and there's function. There is perception and then there is reality. The perception is showing you one picture. The perception is that the sun is rising every day, right? At sunrise, above the horizon, we see it. We see it. We look out there at the ocean and there's nothing there. And then all of a sudden we see a glow. And then we see a little you know, top part of the sun, and it looks like it's coming up out of the water sometime. And this, and we keep looking at it, and we keep, and it, it's rising. And so, to the uninitiated mind, it looks like the sun is moving. It looks like we're standing still, and the sun is doing all of the movement. It's rising, and then if we keep following it, it looks like it's making an arc. It's pinnacling around twelve o'clock noon, and then if you keep following it. It looks like it's going down into the west, into the water. Perception. Now that we have more advanced science, we know that it's not doing that at all. This is, what, this is basically what Habib is saying. We know it's not doing that at all. But you have to have an advanced science in order to determine that. If you have no science, because the tools of science have not yet been presented to you, then you have to go with the form of what you're seeing because you know nothing about how that's functioning. Once you come into an elevated idea of the science behind that movement, then you can say, ha, and now you have to readjust your whole scientific focus to say, no, it's not the sun is moving, we're moving, <laughs> you know, whichever way you want to look at that, all right? So she's absolutely right, but just understand that there are always two ways of seeing fitra. That is what Allah is showing you in the form the other one is in what Allah is showing you in how things actually function. You look at your bones and you look at your teeth and you say, wow. When the baby's teeth fall out and the little boy teeth, little girl teeth come in, we go, wow, we don't even pay attention anymore. We don't even ask ourselves the, the question, how does bone grow? Bones can grow? You'll never see it. I don't care how long you stare at a person's skeleton or at an x-ray. You'll never see bones grow. You'll never see hair grow. I don't care how many days you sit there waiting for your daughter to get enough to make those cornrows. <laughs> That'll be a long wait. And you don't have the kind of tools that can measure the growth of the length of that little girl's hair. But you know it grows because this time next month, it's longer. You can, it's measurably longer, see? So the way things look in the form of one thing, the way things are actually operating beneath the surface of the functionality, that's a whole nother thing. Together, they make the fitra form and function. So I hope that I'll be, I'll be I know Habiba understands. I hope the rest of you are understanding what I'm saying also. Let's continue. Going to move at a faster pace now. Whatever we don't get to today, we'll get to next week. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, it's going into another avenue of what you just said. Now, which one is male and which one is female? The form or the functionality? Well, you tell me what you think. I feel as though the form is the female and the functionality is the male. No. Oh, backwards. <laughs> Let me tell you yeah, why. I think it's the opposite. <laughs> okay, who said, who said it's the opposite? <laughs> Sophia. Sophia, explain why you think it's the opposite. Um, well, actually, I'm just thinking that, you know, with life and I'm thinking of reproduction or producing new life, the woman would be, the female would be um, the one the feminine principle. functioning as the producer of new life. And the well, they both, have, they both are have responsible. The, the both, of, both of them are responsible, but I want more clearly from you and from everyone else. 
the exact reason why the form is masculine principle and the function is feminine principle. Because the form you are seeing, the functionality you don't see, pretty much invisible. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you, I lost some of what you said, Abdul. Say it again. I said that the form you'll see the actually some in a female you won't see the functionality. It's more invisible. Okay, you're coming closer to the to what I'm looking for. I would say, instructor, that that the mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about function, mm -hmm. you you really uh, referencing uh, the process of change, and I think that the uh, the, the feminine principle. Uh, registers change uh, more in a more sensitive way than the, than the masculine would. Can you give me an example? Uh, she she has a uh, well, process of birth. Perfect you know? example. Yes. Uh, when 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 she uh, uh, she notices some changes in 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 her physiology when mm -hmm. when when she first uh, becomes uh, pregnant when she first first conceives. And then she's a she has a constant change going on in, in her physiology all uh, while, while this new life is forming inside of her mm -hmm. and then at birth and then she's uh, sensitive to to the growth of the child from actually from birth to death so mm -hmm. she's, she's constantly involved in in the process mm -hmm. of change she's very sensitive to it perfect I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you all I'm going to give you all the perfect way of explaining it to a different person or another person. And this is a rule. Listen carefully. This is a rule that feminine principles Correct. are the this are you listening? Or do you want to talk over me? Feminine principles are generally the most protected principle by Allah. It's most of the time the principle that is out of view. The form being masculine is the one that is presented out front in the open, vulnerable to other things in the environment. Whereas the functionality being feminine is the thing that's being protected on the inside, like the baby growing in the womb. It's not growing outside of the womb. It's growing within the mother's womb. All right. So the womb is feminine. That's the simple answer. That Functionality has to be protected more than form. You can get your form, you can get the form of your eye in the head, that form, that eye, the thing we're seeing on the outside when we look at you, to be plucked out like Sammy Davis Jr.'s. But it doesn't mean that there's something inside of you that cannot substitute, like Stevie Wonder substitutes, and he, he sees better than most of us. I've never seen him fumble on the piano and he can't see any of the keys. I've never seen him fumble going to get his harmonica. See? Because he's got uh, an inner vision, as he called it, working on his behalf that's feminine inside of him, that's protected. You don't know anything about it until he tells you about it. It's being protected. So I hope that's understood by people who are listening. If not, I can make it clearer, but I don't think we need to spend more time on that. All right? So function... Oh, no. Pardon me. I said super. We good. I said Subhanallah, and I said Jazakallah, Karun. Oh, uh -huh. well, thank you for for offering the subject and the, and the question. Appreciate that. Uh -huh. Okay, let's continue. Here we go. So it is also known as the ecliptic. So I'm going to say these few things about the ecliptic, and then I'm going to let that be the class for today. There's a lot more to say. And you go, well, he didn't talk about the elephant, the lamb, and the meme. Okay, I'll say a little bit about that. This is why it's important to make every class, or if you missed a class, to do what others are doing. Just pay the $20 for the replay. So you don't have to play catch up by joining us in the third session, and you didn't even see the first and the second session, so you have no idea what we're talking about. All right? You have to be able to keep up with where I'm going. That's why I'm making you pay for it. So you'll pay more attention to, to the information, All right? So I gave a substantial breakdown of Adiflam mean, Aries, Taurus, what's the last one, folks? Aries, Gemini. Taurus, Gemini. Gemini. 
I should have had at least 10 people out of the many, many. however many people with us. I should have had almost all of you answering that question. See? So when when one person answers like that, it lets me know, okay, I got to slow it down even more because they're really not paying attention. No, and then you no, slow I you see. you slow up the information. It ain't me. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure you keep up. The mute that was on. You don't have well, to go slow. Just having a hard time pushing this button and making it. Well, that's up. just you. There's, there's, there's 30 people on this line. I was typing. <laughs> I'm, ta I'm not even talking about you. I'm talking about the other 20, uh, 28 outside of Adib that didn't answer. All right. We got to be our call. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, just keep your finger on your mute button or do something. You know, I mean, you know, you have to unmute if you're going to speak. So that's, <laughs> gotcha. you know, that's, that's, that's not rocket science. Just unmute the phone and get in there. We, we've had it through the triune. The neocortex is, is the Aries. The limbic is, is the Taurus going to the neck. And the Gemini is, is the serpent. Now you're on your P's and Q's. <laughs> Very good. All right. And we'll keep telling you why those three are what they are, but you should at least know that those three are what they are. All right. So let's go to the ecliptic from the smaller word eclipse. And eclipse is a reference to the darkness. And as you can see here, it represents an abandonment. This is the most important part of this, an abandonment, literally a failing or a forsaking to forsake a usual place, fail to appear, be eclipsed. Now, take all of that into consideration. To forsake means to stay away from something or to separate from something. So eclipse is also related to the word separate. Separate. Let me show you something real fancy now. Look at the word separate and we've gone through this with a different word if it comes to you while i'm teaching just say what the word is but we're dealing now with the consonants s p r the ate is a suffix s p r now can you equate those three consonants to any three consonants in the word eclipse. The C let me give you, let me give you this hint. Hold on. The S E is a suffix. Now work with the rest of this. And your yeah, go ahead. Go from there. The S and the C are compatible. Bingo. The P the P. In, in, in eclipse as far as being, yeah. And the R in eclipse is, is compatible with the L. See, Habiba's on the top of her game. Yeah, once yeah again. you said the P is the B and, and the... No, no, hold on. No okay. the, P, the, the P is in both words, see? Set, mm -hmm. R8. Yes, yes. Clip, yes. Huh, right? Okay, so there's no need to, cha to change that with the B. I know where you're going. You're racing ahead, and that's okay. Okay, now I'm going to okay. no, let you do that. Hold on a second. The e, no, no, the e is a prefix. It means to go mm -hmm. out. So we're really dealing with the, dealing with the C-L-I-P. Mm -hmm. Okay? If I clip my fingernails, I'm separating my fingernails from my fingers, correct? Right. So the underlying theme of these three consonants is going to always be separation of sorts. So when the eclipse comes, I'm separating the light now. When the darkness comes, I'm separating the day from the night and the night from the day. You get that? Yeah. And in that case, I'm forsaking the sun. I'm forsaking the daylight in favor of the nightlight or the nighttime, we'll call it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, there's another popular word in the Quran that I gave you these same three consonants for. And let me just move down the page and, and, and show it to you and you'll get it right away. No. These three Arabic letters. What word comes from these three letters? Anyone can speak. 
the Kha, the Lam, and the Fa. Khalifa. Very good. Everybody wins the prize on that one. Khalifa. Okay, now let me see how good you are at comparing which ones of these letters compare with Eclipse. Uh -huh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Okay, now say it again. The C is which letter here? C. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm a slow typist. typist. Okay, so the C is, the, is what letter here? I can't see it. <laughs> you, you can't, oh, that's right. You can't see it. I need somebody yeah. to see a screen. The K. Oh, it's, yeah. it's the K. K, right, K. right. The K, yes. which is the C sound, right? Yes. yes. Okay, what's next? And the L is the L. The okay. mm -hmm. And the F is the P. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, now we cooking, right? So, L -F. That's right. So if this were a C, if the K was a C and the F were a P, then this would be mm -hmm. clip, like yes. an eclipse, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you what new netters can do for you without you really having to think a whole lot about it. If you trust the Nunetics method because it's worked for you and just about everything else that you've compared as language, then your mm -hmm. brain will be able to fast track this word or these set of consonants and know without doing the further investigation that whatever a Khalifa is, it's going to be related to what the eclipse is. Mm -hmm. So now I've taken a Quranic word and I've given it an astronomical connection and a, and a connection to astronomy and what's happening with the planets and the stars and the moon and all that stuff. You follow that? Yes. All right. So we're talking about the separation. eclipse. Yeah. It has to do with separation. Okay. 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 And there's something very important. There's something very important that separates from the Khalifa that the angels, quote unquote, were concerned about. What is that? Blood. Shedding the yes. blood. Shedding yeah. The blood. Are you going to make one who's going to, who you're going to create one who's going to make mischief and shed the blood? The shedding of the blood is the separating of the blood from the body, which causes death. So now look further into the meanings they give you in Lang's lexicon for what Khalifa means. You don't have to worry about all this up here. Some of that they, they, they had to say to make it fit their narrative. But look at this. To retire, that's to separate from the workplace, from the family circle, to withdraw, go away, to turn away from, to avoid, to shun a thing. Isn't that separating? Yes. Yes. So like I said, it's always going to have a related meaning if the themes match. I could take this same word in English, the fa la fa, which we gave as the ta la fa for eclipse. I could you can anybody think of another three letter uh, word that means to separate in English? Just give me another three letters Collapse. that match these three, huh? Collapse. Clip. Yeah, good. Clip. Good. Hold on. Okay. Collapse. Oops. Yeah, and the SE is a suffix. But it's the ka la ka in collapse. And collapse, boy, if that doesn't separate you real quick, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Separates you from all the people standing up. Falling down. Yeah. Now who somebody just gave me another word. What, what did you say? Clip. Clip. Yes. Okay. I think I mentioned that mm -hmm. one. Yes. Clip. You clip your fingernails. That separates it. But there's another one I was thinking of. Uh, look at this one. Clap. Cliff. Going over yeah. a cliff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody said clap. Did I hear that just now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said clap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell me, tell me how that matches what we're talking about. When you uh, clap your hands. Your hands are hitting and then they're separating. The only way you'll right. There you go. Hit. That's yeah. right. You can't get another clap unless you separate them, right? Right. Right. All right. Anybody have any others? This is good exercise right here. Believe me, this is good exercise. This is what you're supposed to be doing at home when, when I'm not on the call. 
Also from that clap, the sound, the sound versus no sound. There's no yeah. sound before, and yeah. then the sound separating the sound. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. How about bookend, calypso? Anyone? Say it again. That's a bookend. Cal calypso. Well, calypso. The, the that's music? a very good one. <laughs> All right, you'd have to go look at the meaning of that one and come back to us. I don't know why okay. they named it that. You'll have to figure that out. Okay. That's a good one. <laughs> oh my God. But listen. Let's 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 experiment with some of the other letters in those consonantal connections. What else can you interchange P and F with? Could be a B, huh? Yeah. B, B, C, L, B, yeah. Club. Yeah. If I'm in one club, does it mean I can just walk into your club? No. No. Clubs are usually How about separated. How Say about it again? Calibrate. Calibrate. You calibrate, yeah. yeah. Caliber. Yeah, caliber. Mm -hmm. Calibrate. Mm -hmm. Those all have to do with separations of sorts. But what about carrot? Carrot? Yes. Show me the three connections. Uh, it's like, carrot. like a diamond that, that you have to cut. Tell me, tell me what the T, what you're, what you're, you're comparing the T with. Uh... We're talking guttural, liquid, labial, not dental, labial. T is a dental, cara. Okay. You got the so other I'm... two right, but you yeah. got the last one incorrect. Sorry. Sorry. It's all right. Look for another labial. What well, are the labials the... again? C-A-R-O-B, carob. Yeah, well, the are M, B, F, T, and V. Okay, so give me a, a, a give me a KLV sound or CLV. Cleave. Yeah, what does cleave mean? Cleave. A separate. That's right. Gal. In a woman, this is called cleavage. Yeah. Right. And what does it do? It separates the breasts. Yes. Calve. <laughs> Say it again. Calve. Calve. Right. Spell it. C A L V E. What does it mean? Uh, it means uh, a newborn cow away from the mother. Oh, calf. Uh, no, calf. you're talking about calf. Yeah. yeah. Calf. Calf. You have to put an S on calves for it to be plural. Okay. Yes. But you're right. The calf, the calf. right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, what does that have to do with separating? Uh, you have the, the newborn being separated from the mother. Immediately. Yeah. A baby. That's right. Soon as it's born, it's separated from his mama. Now, now, now let's get, let's get, let's get fancy with this. Now, let's start doing some backwards letters. Hold on. Let me get that back. Hope y'all are enjoying this. Uh, mm -hmm. let's, let's get some backward words. And when I say back, what are, what are you doing? Hold <laughs> on. He's got a mind of his own. All right. When I say backwards, what I'm saying is that instead of pa la fa or ka la pa, do it in reverse order. P flat. Halak. Say it again now. Say that again. Halak. You said plaque. Okay. A palette. Hold on. Hold on. Now give me those T's, man. Listen to what you're saying before you before you speak. Somebody said plaque. I said what plaque. is pl yeah, what is plaque? Could be, it's a badge. Could be a badge of honor. No, a bill. Yeah. Huh? Build up on your teeth could be a build up on your teeth, or could that's be right. A... That should be separated from your teeth, right? Yeah. But if I give you a plaque as an award, that a separates bad. you. That separates you from the rest who didn't do yes. that to get that plaque, right? Bad yes. All right. Let's keep. Let's keep on. Keep on. Give me some more. Hmm. Uh, what about F L Q in Arabic? What word does that give us? It's the name of a surah. Say it again. Say, Falak. There you go. Falak. There you go. Y'all are thinking now. Felak. What does that mean? Dawn. The dawn. That's right. And where's the separation? Between day, day and night. That's right. 
the rising yeah. of the sun separate the night. Yeah, I got a few. Uh, yeah, I got a few. You got yeah, a few from, more from, from me? Excuse me, from the night and, and the yeah, from, either way, from either the way. night sun for the yeah. night. I got you. The cover of night to the light mm -hmm. of the day. You got it. Can anyone think of any more? Roger. There you go. Good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Now tell me, tell me uh where you <laughs> made these connections. Uh of course after F uh oh, hold on one moment. I'm sorry. Let me hold on. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, F to the F, uh R to the L and J to the uh H. That's right. A lot of people miss that J as a guttural. A lot of times we skip over the H and the J, not remembering that they're gutturals. Well, how about Fu Quan? <laughs> Fu, <laughs> Fu who? <laughs> Yo, funny. That's kind of I, I'm gonna leave that one alone. Gonna oh, thank you. Yeah, about, thank you. Good advice. Criteria. How about Say criteria? Criteria. Fu Quan. The criteria. Why, why are you giving me all these T's? And I keep telling you there are no T's oh, in here. Cool. Okay. <laughs> What about flip? Okay, let's see. Does that match? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So when you flip a thing, where's the separation? You turn around. Mm -hmm. Flip your mattress over. You separated the bottom from the top and the top from the bottom. Bingo. You tell your birds they're going to have to quiet down while we you, okay, you have to put I'll, them I'll on put mute. On, I put myself on mute. <laughs> there you go. All right. Any other words before we move on? This was fun. This was necessary. Mm -hmm. My crap. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. All right. So. Crap. That's a good one. That's and that's a, good a clear, one. that's a clear. I don't have to ask you how what that has to do with separation. <laughs> separation. <laughs> Say separation of church and state, but that was that's political. <laughs> but you said it anyway, didn't you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So all the crap is the separation from the body. That's right. Expulsion. That's Split right. Split and sever. There you go. Split. Oops, hold on. What did I do? Where am I? Okay, split. And the I-T is a suffix. So you can get away with the T there. It's a tamarbuta, feminizer of the word. And then uh, Patricia also said sever. See how clever she is to say sever? And severe also, but sever. Am I spelling sever correctly? S-E-V-E-R. Yeah, S-E-E-R. Okay. Yeah, sever. Okay, so tell if me what letters they match. If you add E, it would be severe. The R, the E, the R. If you put an E on R, it, it would be severe. Hold on, I can't hear you. It's my birds. Start with the S. Abdullah, was that you? Who was that? Explain sever. S-E-R, I thought it spelled. S what? S-E-R. E-R? Yes. Oh, oh maybe. you mean like server? Okay, no, okay, sever. Yeah, no, it's sever. I think that's correct. That's According sever. to here, it's it's about, it's right, it's right. Okay. But you get the you get the idea. Right. Right? What about fell? Say it again. Fell. Cell? No, fell. F E L L. F E L L, those are only two consonants, F and L. Oh. But let me tell you what you came awfully close to that would have been correct. Self, aren't you separate from other selves? All right, now while you think about one more before we put a tail end on this, I need to excuse myself for about three minutes and I'll be right back. Stand by. Alaikum, everyone. This is the first time that we've We've done uh, uh, our own research. We've, we've done our own research in class. So those who, these are the times where if someone asks you 
what you did, you said, well, first of all, you, you, you should be there and you understand it's just like the, the fight. And they, you tell somebody about the fight and they said, but, you know, to get to a point that you had to be there, you had to inter do uh, the interchange with others to really get the nectar of, uh, of, of our research. We're, we're, we're budding uh, researchers, scientists. Should have been there. Yes. Been there. Yes, but we want to be able to, now that we're here, we want to be able to do like the, like, uh, the prophet said, uh, to tell those who are not here in such a manner that they would say, were you there? So we, we have to tell to, to, soak this in to cultivate it so we'd be able to to uh, give it to others in a more palatable manner mm -hmm. so this 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 is we're making history right now so i just wanted to put that out there i didn't want to hold the, the sunset so mm -hmm. anybody else want to share i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm mute myself i found out what the calypso meant the calypso uh, is, is de derived from the ancient Greek meaning to cover, to conceal, or to hide. And that's the same thing that the eclipse does. So calypso also means to cover, to hide? Mm -hmm. so to cover, uh -huh. to so conceal, to hide. And yeah. uh, what had happened, there was a group of nymphs and the, 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 one, the, the one that was the most important was separated from um, the rest of the nymphs and taken off to an island for seven years. Uh, cover is another good word. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, humble. That's Calypso. Would you, would you spell that for me, please? <laughs> C-A-L-Y-P-S-O. C C A L Y P S O. C is in Charles. A L is in Larry. Y P is in Peter. S O. Okay, Shukran. Alhamdulillah. Okay, I'm back. Alhamdulillah. Do we have any new words? Cover. We were just sharing yeah. with the with yeah with our text. Cover. Very good one. How does that separate? Obvious. Yeah, that's yeah. that separate. From whatever's outside of, uh, be, be, you know, whatever's between, no, whatever's on the outside of the cover, whatever's beyond the That's cover. Right. Seen from the unseen, huh? Even if it's a That's cover uh, of a, of a or something, you know, the top on the cup, we call it the cover, mm -hmm. cover, cover the pan, mm -hmm. cover the pot. Right. I'm going to give you, I'm, I'm, huh? Kufa. That's what a kufa there you go. Huh? That's correct. Let's put these down. Instructive below. Well. Yes. I didn't think, you know, I'm just reading the um, what you know the the meaning of it before you start putting all these other words and mm -hmm. they they're not making they're not agreeing to what we're talking about. You know, the um, I guess it's a uh, try um, try word or try root word. Or, mm -hmm. You know, to try consonantal connections. Yeah, it, it, you mm -hmm. know what we're talking about. It doesn't even say anything about it in, That's in, right. in the wording. Because they're covering the meanings. <laughs> they are kufers. They're kafirs. <laughs> That's their job, to cover the real meanings. But remember the when thing. they told you, remember, remember when they told you black meant evil? You know, that kind of covering. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Remember when they told you all white was right? You know, white right. lie, it's okay, but a black lie, you're going to hell, right? Right. Yeah. So don't 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 trust don't trust the dictionaries to give you accurate meanings. And we were having this conversation. We had a couple of the uh, instructors over, and we went to breakfast this morning here in in Raleigh. And uh, we were talking about this phenomenon that you're talking about right now, and that is why these dictionary meanings don't match up. It's because they designed them to be what they call definitions. This was mm -hmm. an early lesson that you missed, but I'm going to explain it again. I'll probably do it again on Sunday because this is necessary. Don't call what we do giving definitions. Mm -hmm. Let me show you why. May I? Yes. All right. Definition. When you listen to the word, it is saying def phonetian. 
whichever way you spell that word, it'll, it'll show me. Hold on a second. Def. I'm terrible. E-H-O-N-E-C-I-E-N. Yeah. There you go. We got it. Deaf Phoenician. This is what they're telling you about these people. They are the ones responsible for most of your English definitions. It's the group of people in history called the Phoenicians. I taught on this just a couple of weeks ago. Maybe you were absent. All 20-something of you. <laughs> but it was a mockery. First of all, this is a word out of the Greek language. So the Greeks called these people Phoenicians. The, the Phoenicians didn't call themselves Phoenicians. They called themselves Canaanites or Canaanites. You got that? Yes. That's what they call themselves by this word. Yes. Oops. Hold on. And there was one more word for these people in the land of Canaan called Venetians, okay? That yeah. was the section of the land that they lived in called Venetia. Venetian so blinds. Okay, so slow down a little bit. You there though. Now, the Phoenicians, the Canaanites, Canaanites, and the Venetians are all the same people. That's the first thing we're establishing. The Phoenicians, the ancient Phoenicians were seafarers that used to travel the lands and go to other lands and gank them for their stuff. And one of the things they did along the way while they were taking stuff from the people that they visited was that they left with them a reinterpretation of that per people's own language. They began to be the ones to tell them what their own words meant, even if it was different from what they had already established as the meanings for those words. They did this all over the world, including the Arabic speaking world. Hmm. So a lot of the words that you're thinking are Arabic words and Quran words and all of that are actually words that were influenced by the ancient Phoenicians who were also influenced by the ancient Persians. So the words you're thinking are Quranic words, oh, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, alameen, and all that that's not in the Quran. Alameen and all of that. The Adhan and all of that that's not in the Quran. They are the influence of people like the Phoenicians and like the ancient Persians who swapped out language meanings. Now, when they swapped out those meanings, as they did even for Arabic, they did it by placing similar words into the Arabic lexicon. And then they told them, this word means what we say it means. <laughs> we don't care what you said to me. We're the leaders now. You get it, right? Yes. So when they did that, they caused the people who they were teaching to become deaf to the original meaning. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. And when you and if you knew better and you went to the Phoenicians and said, well, wait a minute, that's not what our word used to mean. How are you going to tell us what this word means? And we've been speaking it for thousands of years before you got here. Here's what the Phoenicians would do. We don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to do what we want you to do, you know, because they were they were wow. warriors. They were war makers, too. Wow. You're going to do it. So when the Phoenicians went into Egypt. And they found all of this writing on the on the sides of the wall that we now call hieroglyphics. Yes. They told the ancient Egyptians, they said, well, we need you to teach us this language, man. If you guys have been ruling for thousands of years, you know, we need to know what you know. And mm -hmm. the Egyptians said, you'll never know what we know. We'll never teach it to you. But when they decided to make a pact between the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Greeks, for purposes of going into other places, especially in Africa and in India, and ganking them for their stuff. They said, we can do this better united than we can on our own. We're fighting each other. What good is that? Why don't we join forces and then go get the stuff they got in Africa and then go get the stuff they got in Asia? And then you see, so that's how they decided to think. And they said, the easiest way to conquer these people is to conquer their language. Let's mm. just, let's reinvent their language. So that all sense. roads point back to us and our superiority. The Arabs did the same thing because they were under this ancient Persian influence of language uh, uh, 
abracadabra in language. Manipulation. In language manipulation. That's correct. Now, Allah speaks to this very effectively in the Quran. I gave it to you a couple of weeks ago. Allah says, deaf, dumb, blind, they will not return to the path. When the, when, when the translators... Hmm? Quran 218. Thank you, sir. Second Surah 18th Ayat. Allah said, and all of the translators that I've seen, except for one, translate this as deaf, dumb, and blind. Listen to what I said. Deaf, dumb, and blind. What's the word for and in Arabic? As it wa, w, a. Yeah, w, a. Wa. So it doesn't say sumun, bukmun, wa, umyun. That's right. It says sumun, bukmun, umyun. And if Allah doesn't separate it, it means they're all the same thing. That's right. You see how Allah peeped their card? Whoever's background that is, don't invite them into this I'm, conversation. I'm, they ain't ready for it. <laughs> they ain't ready for this high power stuff here. <laughs> they still fighting over cigarettes. Don't 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 invite them into genetics yet. No, no, that, that, that's my son. They just the football game. I'm sorry. I'm surprised we got as many men as we have tonight, man. I forgot that football game was on. You instruct the kids nothing about sports. No, not not that no. he would not 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 to interrupt this. For that, yes, that's a that's a poor trade off. Please, please, like Jane Bell, please don't go. <laughs> no, okay. So, Imam, you know, it was phonetics and they sound so whatever it sounded like, but they changed the word. But the sound it sounds the same, but a different meaning. The exactly. phonetics. You see what you just said, right? Phonetics. The word phonetics and phonemes are from the same word Phoenician. The word phone is from the word Phoenician. The word phony is from the word Phoenician because these people were giving you phony meanings for words. And the reason why it also is phone because it sounds like there's somebody in the phone, but there's really not. When we were little, we used to think mommy was talking to somebody, a little person who was in the phone because we could hear the voice. We said, who's that? That's auntie. Auntie. And you're trying to figure out how auntie got in the phone and how that band got into the radio. You know, that's how we think as little people. There's a little bunch of people in the radio. There's people on the other side of the TV screen. We didn't know. We had to learn that, right? So the Phoenicians were called that by the Greeks because the Greeks peeped their cards. And they said, we see what these Phoenicians are doing. They're giving phony meanings for words. So they named the Greeks Phoenicians. Their real names spell were spellcasters. Yes, spell they were they were linguistic spellcasters. Abracadabra. And when 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 they say poof, it's what we say it is. So they understood that about the ancient people of uh, um, ancient Egypt. What's the name of ancient Egypt? Kemet. 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 And Kemet and Kemet. They understood that about them. So th it was the ancient Greeks that called the ancient Kemet people Egyptians, meaning these are people who are jipping the E, the I. The, our vision, our insight is being jipped by these people. They're not giving us the real meanings for these hieroglyphics. <laughs> but isn't there another point in there where they said, well, we'll go conquer the world with you? So if they can yeah. hang out, if they can yeah. hang out with these people, they can learn learning yes. the meaning. Yes, the, but, the, the job, but the ancient the ancient Kemet people were smart enough not to teach them everything about their language that they were looking to learn. So the ancient Egyptians gave them fake meanings for the hieroglyphs, and then the Phoenicians went and gave that fake mean those fake meanings, those phony meanings the to the rest of the world that they conquered, including the Persians and including the ancient Arabs, who then gave us fake meanings for what's in the Quran and in, in other parts of the Arabic language. You can't even tell me what the word Arab means. The Arab, Arabs can't tell you what the word Arab actually means. They give you a thousand different walks through the park trying to give you what that one word means. And Nunetics can explain it one, two, three. Yes. Most Muslims Real, know. Realize and realize. And there you go. That's their, that's their scheme. So they give you what are called connotations in language. 
but the real meanings for words are called denotations, not connotations. Denote means original note or foundational note. D means down, that means foundational, fundamental. And you see note, con note. And a note is the frequency, isn't it? Yes. So a connotation is when they have conned the frequency. They gave you a false frequency. But that is also making things into canon also, to make it so. Yeah, you see canon, right? That's a popular word in, in Catholicism, in Christianity. Well, that's from the Canaanites. It's from the Canaanites. Mm -hmm. And it means dog, canine. And you also have... No, no, no. Let me, let me, let me finish so we, you can make this okay. connection. Okay. This is an important okay. connection. Yeah. A canon is a religious text. Yes. But you got these people looking at you right here on the screen called Canaanites. And mm -hmm. from them, we get the word canine. C-A-N-I-N-E, which is the dog family. Right. And in the priesthood of the Catholic Church, they make them wear backward collars as though they are dogs. Yes. They clips from here. Right. And then they give you a word for God that's just the word dog backwards. So what's all, what is all of this? See, this comes out of all this connotative language that they put around the world. And the connotative language, they got dogma, remember? Dogma, dogma. yeah. That's religious Dogmatism. text also. That's dogmatic right. you got it and they learned that from the corrupted language that they learned from the egyptians the, the commissions who wouldn't teach them the real meanings because they had dog gods mm. you understand what i'm saying describe you know dog dog head <laughs> so they they were trying to peep into the wisdom and they got okie doke by the egyptians so they called them egypt meaning these are the people who are jipping the eye we're looking at one thing. We think we're seeing what it is, but they're telling us something to, that's jipping our vision. They're jipping us out of the vision. So they call them Egypt. And that's where you get the word gypsy. People who you better be careful because they'll jip you. They'll, they'll give you a worthless thing for, for your good thing. You see, that kind of thing. Now, the Quran says, Summon bukmon umyun. Summon means deaf. And it means to summon. See the English word they have for someone? It means to summon, to call somebody. Now, in that. order to call, when you call somebody, they're supposed to hear you, right? And if you get a summons to appear in court, they call that a hearing. You were summoned to appear on April 12, 1978 for a hearing in front of Judge Judy or whoever, right? But it's a hearing, see? Yes. A it, it summons. Is. So it's very fun. difficult to learn English because uh, for people who don't uh, speak English, because we have words that um, sound the same, but they're not like meet. I'm going to meet mm -hmm. you. All and of the that was invented meet. by these people I'm telling you about. Yes. Bear. Yes. Is it B-A-R-E? Is it B-E-A-R the animal or is it B-E-A-R like to put up with something? <laughs> yes. To bear the burden. We yes. don't know. Arabic mm -hmm. doesn't have that. It's only the Western bastard languages like English. That's what they call them, mm -hmm. black bastard, because they have no, no identifiable father. When you start mm -hmm. tracing the language back, if one goes to Hebrew, another one goes to Greek, another one goes to, you know, you don't know where the mm -hmm. English language came from. So they call it a bastard language, but that's the product of these Phoenicians. They and did that. They Americans made that mess. expanded when, when they changed the word good to bad, saying bad is good. <laughs> Well, it, it, we, we can we can stay on that train forever because the way they've corrupted the language is to no end, actually, to find all of the corruption. That's why the N-word, my book, The N-Word, talks about the corruption of the English language and how all of that began when they began ripping that language off of the walls of ancient Egypt. That's what that's all about. Yes. But instead of going down that track, let's stay with what I'm Bye. talking about. Someone, bukmon, umyun. Someone, it means deaf. Yes. Because you're being summoned, but you don't want to hear it. You don't want to come to the hearing. Mm. Canaanites is from Canaan, and Canaan gave us canine, which is the dog family. That's related to Bookman, because Bookman is related to the word behemoth, which means a big animal. Okay. And if you've been around a Rottweiler or, you know, a German shepherd that's being trained by the police department as the K-9 squad, you get it? Canaan. 
A9. And the letter K is the 11th letter in the English alphabet. So it's 11, nine. They turned it backwards to nine eleven so that it would represent an emergency. When you call the canine mm -hmm. squad, there's an emergency. Right. Yeah, remember the emergency that happened for America I, I think some of the on nine is... eleven. Y'all listening to me? Mm -hmm. Remember that emergency? It happened on nine eleven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is that the number you call when you have an emergency? That's what they say. What does the United Front was September? Instructive a lot. I want to just say that. Well, let me hear what those um, other two questions were that came in before you. Instructive. Oh. Instructive. Yeah. What does that 11 represent? What does the, the letter 11 represent? I mean, the number no, 11? No, it says 9 11. The 9th was the hour where um, Christ. Oh, okay. Died. Uh, yeah. K is the 11th letter in the, in the English alphabet. Yeah, but wh what is the 11 from? I just told you. Huh? I just told you. Mm. Count the letters in English. When you get to the 11th letter, let me tell you, what, tell me what letter that is. You counting? L? I, maybe I should ask you to write them down. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, write them down uh, and number them and tell me what the letter K is. Oh, right, right. Uh, M. I mean, not M. Say them, say them out loud and I'll count them for you. Say your alphabets out loud. A, B, C. Wait, 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 slow down. Say A, 1, B, 2. Do it like that. A, 1, B, 2, C, 3, D, 4, E, F, 5, G, uh, JK, I mean, where are you, man? Hold on I'm a sorry. second. I, I need yeah. to come see you. <laughs> J Somebody else want to take a take a try? J Hold on. Oh, you way off. Hold on. Okay. Somebody else count those count those letters. K. Okay. A one, B two, C three. Feel like I'm playing bingo four, here now. Five. <laughs> 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 Keep going, okay. Abim. Okay, F six, G seven, H eight, I nine, J ten, and K eleven. Okay, so you got that, uh, okay. Salim. K is the eleventh letter it. in the English I alphabet. Alrighty then. Can I move on? Yes. Can I finish Please this ability? Brother Bilal. Yes. Instructor Bilal. I, I got a little my my uh, my uh, little grandson here. He wants to. Know, can you uh, help him out with Egypt? Break that down. He he's listening now. Yeah, he's right here looking at you. Okay, so he can see your screen. He can see the screen. All right, I'm gonna do this for him only because he's he's little or young. <laughs> I should say not little but young. All okay. right. Okay. Egypt. <laughs> Let me make this big. <clears throat> What's his name again? Tell me your name. Is he um, one that I spoke to? Yes. He, okay. My name's Aiden. Hey, Aiden, I remember you. You remember me? Yes. Yeah, you kept me on the phone about an hour. <laughs> we had fun that night, didn't we? All right. All right. So, Egypt. Always be patient with our children. Now, let me do it this way. The letter E means to exit or to go out, to leave. Okay. okay. All right. And jip means to cheat. Okay. Now I'm going to give you one more connection. The letter E also means the eye, your eye. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if I make this bigger, 
It means both your eyes. If I make this bigger, you can pretty much see how this first E is like a cartoon figure of your eye. This E is a cartoon figure of your other eye. And this Y is your nose in the middle of your two eyes. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay, so the word eye means one eye here, nose in the middle, other eye on the other side. Okay. So E also means, or Egypt means to jip or to cheat both of your eyes. That means that what you're looking at is not really what it is. You ever see a, mu a magician who's doing a magic trick? No. Okay, so you'll have to show him a, ma a magician on YouTube sawing a woman in half. You know what? You know that kind of stuff they do, right? It looks like he sawed her in half. He sawed down the box and then he separated them, and her feet are still dangling out the other end, moving, and her head is still over here, smiling. And how did he? How did he? He gypped your eyes. It was a magic trick. So Egypt meant the place where they were doing a whole lot of magic abracadabra kinds of tricks mm -hmm. on people, mm -hmm. but not tricks like, you know, oh, that was fun. And then you get put $2 in their hat, not that kind of trick. They were jipping people out of big wealth, gold and diamonds and slaves. And they were, they were jipping people out of everything they could get their hands on in Egypt. That's how they ended up with so many slaves. So it just means the jipping of the eyes, because the eyes go out in search of. Your eyes are always going out looking for things, see, to exit from you and then go out there. Look, look, what is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? And then when you see what that is, you want to bring that to you. So you end up doing all kinds of things to jip people, to cheat people out of what you're looking at. I want that money in his pocket. So I'm going to tell him, look over there. And then when he's looking over there, I'm going to snatch his wallet. You know, that's the common criminal thief, right? But it's always the jipping of what you think you're seeing. So to call someone an Egyptian is not necessarily a good thing. Seeing or hearing especially the sight, because I can distract you by saying things and making you listen. And while you're hearing me, I'm stealing your wallet. Hey man, you got the time. And while you're thinking about the time and looking at your watch, he done got your wallet already. Cause you're too busy listening and you're not really paying attention with your eyes. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. All right. You're very welcome. You join us anytime, right? Okay. All right. Love having you on. Aiden. Eden. Next time you come on, I'm gonna tell you what your name means. How is he spelling it? Gary, how does he spell his name? Eden, how are you spelling your name? He didn't go to bed. That was good. Oh, is he music? <laughs> he said, I got what I wanted. I'm going to bed, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's, uh, it's A-I-D-E-N. Okay, Aiden, for real. Yeah, yeah. I used to live in a town down here in North Carolina called Aiden, but it's spelled A-Y-D-E-N. Aiden, North Carolina, but it's from Eden. Okay. Yeah, it's from an ancient word. Ancient word called oh. Idnan. That's in the Quran also. <laughs> Idnan. I just wanted to say that I think you lost some of the new people tonight in the class. That's what the because replays they, are for. It's only twenty dollars. <laughs> they don't understand that they have they to. They don't have uh, to understand. They are, all they need to law. understand. It doesn't matter. Everything. Okay. See, I target my audiences. Sometimes I'm speaking to everybody. Sometimes I'm speaking to Aiden. Okay, I understand and that. It, it, the part, and, and, and it's not for everybody. Like everything in the Quran is not for everybody. Allah targets mm -hmm. certain people and he tells you about those people and you might not understand what Allah is saying because he's not speaking to you. So when mm -hmm. you get the $20 replay, it's only $20. <laughs> That's 
That's it. Then you can go back and pause and skip. Oh, this is when they're going to talk about that aid in, in Egypt stuff. I, I don't know what that. And then you just push it past that to when he starts talking about, you know, something you like. And it's that simple. This is a training mm -hmm. class. This is not me talking to the public across YouTube. Well, I, I understand that, but they, they don't understand that they need to memorize the um the different um labials and gutturals and liquids, and they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to um follow mm -hmm. when you break down Khalifa. What they're not gonna be able to. to they're not gonna be able to understand that all these letters are interchangeable. How can how can you predict language. what other people are going to be able to understand or not understand? Because they called me on the phone while I was in class. Well, that's one person. How come they're not in class? They didn't have ten dollars. They are in the class. Well, then what's the problem? Why don't they tell me? Open up the mic and tell me that. Why are they going I through? Think they're, I think you're intimidating to some people. Then they're they're not the ones who should be on this call. If you listen, I told you this in the beginning. Listen to me now. I told you when I started this class, I said it's not going to be for everybody. Simple as that. If you are not yet convinced by my nice way of speaking and teaching, that you can ask me just about anything that has to do with anything I've ever taught. I've opened up the class and I said, you can ask me anything about anything I've ever taught. Where are these same people? Well, it's not going to help them. To, unless you can teach them what they're looking for, then you're a help to them. If you're not, they're wasting their time coming to you. Feel free, please. I almost beg you to open up your phone and ask the instructor what your question is. I cannot teach to two people for three hours. I have to teach to the general audience. And when I see the need to speak to individuals who ask questions, then I try my best mm -hmm. to answer their questions. And everybody else just needs to take a little pill pill break and say, let me go get some water or some tea or something. And then come back. By the time you come back, I'll be back on what you're here for. It's not <laughs> going to be for everybody. You cannot second guess what I'm going to teach and how I'm going to teach and how much I'm going to teach. You can't do that. But if you have something you want me to cover or want me to finish because I didn't finish it, open up your phones. But if you can't be that honest with me, then this really is not for you. I know it, it sounds also hard, has but a lot that's, to just, do that's, just how, that's just how that is. And patience, patience. You I and told you really that in the beginning of the class. I said, I always say, thank you for your patience and your understanding, because I know this is not easy information to teach. And y'all are not the easiest people on earth to teach. Well, thank oh, you, Imam. Because we have been so <laughs> robbed of information that we are literally starving for truth. Contaminated. So we have to be patient with ourselves. And like I said, when you hear a young person ask a question, your lips should be zipped until I'm finished addressing that young person. They don't have the same level of understanding you have. So we have to go slower with them. And we have to ask, are there any other questions you have? He's just 11 years old, from what I remember. Either nine or 11. That's nine. Talking to. Yeah, nine, nine. nine years old. He was yeah. listening. Muhammad the prophet is reported to have stopped his khutbah, Juma, to sit with people who had a question about something he said in the Juma. You do that today, they'll throw you out the masjid. Ma'am, you're not to interrupt the Juma. This person should not stop you doing the Juma. That's the, the other, a conniption if you stop it. But Muhammad the prophet in this hadith, it says a man stopped him in the middle of his khutbah and said, uh, dear messenger of God, I'm not understanding what you're talking. And do you know what he did? He pulled up a little bench or something and he sat here. He put a bench in front of him. The man who had the question sat there and he asked the prophet everything he wanted to ask. And the prophet kept saying, are you finished? Oh, no. One more thing, uh, the holy prophet. And he, he sat there another 20, 30 minutes, I guess, answering this man's questions. And when the man finally said, yeah, that's about all I have to ask today. The prophet got back up and he finished his khutbah. I Everybody understand the instructor for a while, but people still need to know the seven core groups. That's all I'm trying to say. Well, what's people wrong with the new I think book. that needs to be expressed what, that people well, need what, to know what the, is seven wrong, core the seven groups. core groups. Sweetheart, the seven core groups are in four different books. I don't know. This the first book you buy. These, are, these are your students instructor to allow. Well, you need to I'm stop just, going you know. to bat for them. If they're not going to go to bat for themselves, <laughs> you're going to get beat up for them too. But they should be on the call. They should be asking these questions. Now, if you just like the punishment, you just keep going. I'm man proofing my chakras. <laughs> Let me continue and conclude. Uh,
Now, everybody, people, zip your lips. Let me finish. Thank you, Vadib. Uh -huh. I know exactly where I am. Sumun, I hope that young man doesn't take offense and say, I'm not going back there anymore. See, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. But you and harsh, like you harsh adult knuckleheads, you, you give nobody no slack. And you need to check yourselves on that. Because I will shut down the hall. Hold on. He, I will shut, was, I will he, shut he, oh, listen. I, I will shut the whole class of adults down to teach that one young person. I'll tell y'all come back on another day and I'll just I'll call him back and I'll have another hour just with him because that's how important our young people are in learning this language. Absolutely. I want to be with the young person. Nine years okay. old. And he I was curious with Egypt. Just now. He was nine years old and he was curious with Egypt. That's why he wanted to. And he was know. courageous okay. enough to ask a question, not through that's anybody. Right. His uncle not right there. He could have he could have asked through his uncle and he didn't. It, he yeah, asked nothing him. to I'm not wasn't trying to start anything. He just wanted to know. And no, so he didn't start anything. Allah is teaching all of us. And if you're not really listening, you don't know how Allah is trying to teach you a lesson through situations just like that. Because we're so busy talking and thinking we know. That we're not listening to the lesson that's coming across this young person or across some elderly person, 85-year-old person who wants to ask a question or who's not understanding something. And I have to stop to address that issue. But you have to listen more than you talk. That's how I've learned most of what I've learned because I learned to listen more than talk. They always talk about that. You have one mouth and two ears because God wants you to listen more than he wants you to talk. And it's not, a, it's not this that I'm doing. You're all adults. I don't need to spank anybody. All right. This is what you call a pull up for the future. You have to learn etiquette. Right, Imam Adib? He teaches on these things in his Friday lectures. Yes. You yeah. have to learn etiquette. You have to learn kindness. You have to learn patience while asr, by the token of time, the human being mm -hmm. is surely lost, except for those who have faith, do mm -hmm. deeds, good deeds, join together in the spreading of truth, and join together in patience and constancy. Those are the yeah. only ones who are going to make it according to yeah. Surah Al-Asr. Give an attentive ear, a silent tongue, and a faithful heart. That's the beginning yeah, of each one of what? his lectures. Uh, uh, but, uh, okay. Briefly, briefly, I guess I, I want to say I think I'm uh, intelligent. I, I think I'm intelligent. I think I'm kind. I think I'm polite. And I'm trying to be a comforter to somebody who's in the class. So if I overstep my bounds, please forgive me. You have no, not I'm, I'm, You have I'm not overstood. Let me speak, please. Mm -hmm. This is not a public forum. We're turning it into one. You have not overstepped your bound. You did what any good-hearted instructor would do. But I'm reassuring the people who asked you that question or had that concern, they are not wrong either because they spent money to be here today, I hope, I guess, right? So they have a right to ask questions about things that they thought they were going to be learning that they might not have learned or that I might not have gotten to yet. I might still get to whatever they came here for. I don't know what it is, but this is why I open up to people and say, tell me what's on your mind. If you're not understanding, let me know that also. I can't do any more than that. So I think I'll have to speak to you privately, Instructor Malal. Okay? Well, whichever way you got to do it, email, private, text message, you know, I accept all forms of communication. <laughs> Just let those people know if they're still listening. I love I don't know them. If they're, I don't no, they're, well, they're They'll get the message some other way. Okay. But I love everybody who comes here for this because Allah, Allah sends you here. I don't send you here. Half the people here right now, I never met them before. Half of you, I don't know what you look like because you never open your phones. So I never know who I'm talking to. The only way I'll know is when you say, I'm so-and-so, and I thought I was going to learn, or can you? You know, it doesn't have to be negative. Could you please address this issue? Because I had this on my mind. That's what the little young nine-year-old nine Aiden just said. He said, I was thinking about what the meaning of this word. Now, I could have said to him, well, that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> Come back next week. <laughs> oh, that's, that's unkind. And it would be unkind if your friends or whoever the person was who didn't get addressed what they wanted me to address. 
it would have been unkind for me to say that to them if they opened up the phone and said, could you explain I'm a new I'm a newcomer or a first timer or a third timer and I'm not understanding what you mean by Khalifa and I'm not understanding the connections to uh, Aleph Lam Mim and could you explain I would have been more than happy especially for somebody who doesn't usually say anything I would have loved to address that question but I can't address it if you don't open up your phones and tell me you don't even have to tell me your name just tell me what the question is or the concern just know that from now on. This is not about me hurting anybody's feelings or anything like that. This is about me giving you what you came here for. It won't happen 100% of the time, 100% of the time. It won't happen like that. I'm human. I can only cover but so much ground. So just be patient. Be kind. This is not you, baby. I'm talking to the group. Be forgiving. Be, be loving. Be nurturing with each other. Be a rah-rah group for other people. When you hear somebody got the right answer, you should say, yeah, I was thinking that same thing. Y'all do that all the time. I love it. Trying to beat each other to the answer. That's great. I love that. We're not out here gambling. We're not out here selling our bodies. We're not out here, you know, smoking reefers and drinking wine. That ain't what we, we any one of us could be doing that. We're here trying to learn what Allah is saying to us. How much more noble an audience can I have than that? So don't feel offended. I, I will not offend anyone who loves Allah and loves the message of the Quran. I'd be punished for that. I'm not, that's, I'm not in the business of doing that. I'm in the business of making this as clear as I can to the majority of people who come to listen to it. If I know what your concerns are. Now, if I don't know what your concerns are, then you have some work to do. Find a different way of getting me that information than email me maybe or text me or if you're in my city come visit me people come to new netics institute i told you i had two learners here this morning we went to breakfast if you're in my town i'm gonna make time for you so that's how we do because we're a family a new netics family we argue fuss and fight but like families but we never say we don't want to deal with each other anymore because we argue and fuss that's just natural can i move on now yes yeah, all I need is one yes. Thank you, Celine. So let's end this point on the Summun, Bukmun, Umyun, the Phoenician, the Canaanite, the Venetian. Summun means I can't hear, that's deaf. Bukmun means a big animal, like a bohemoth, that's a dog, Canaan, canine. And obviously, Umyun is the word for blindness. And I think uh, the unit may have been who was quick to say Venetian blinds, right? Because Venetians have to do with how much sun you let in in order to see. That's what your Venetian blinds are regulating. So Allah is showing us that although there are three different things he's addressing, they're all referring to one personality type in history. And they are the people who are heavily invested in making sure that you don't hear and that you don't see and that you don't feel. They're all the same family or personality type. Is the point. Be sure to not be any of these. When you hear the truth, don't say, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Because then that makes you no better than the foundation, the deaf Phoenician. So going back to the original point, we don't use definitions. We use descriptions. A description is describing. And scribing is when you scribble, like script. And sometimes an older person will use script, but a younger person won't be able to read it because they only know print. So you have to descript or describe that language to the young person. You have to take it out of the scribble, the loops and the connections and all of that. And you have to separate each letter like you do in regular print English and say, okay, Aiden, this word is E, G, and you have to write it out in print. Da, da. And then when they get older, you can teach them how to make the loops and how to connect one letter with the other so it looks pretty. And then you can do it in script. Because script is for older minds. 
That's why they call Revelation scripture. It's for older minds. It's not for young minds. It's for older, sophisticated minds that investigate more. Okay? So I hope everyone have understood that. Can I move on just for about another five minutes? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. This is not Sunday, right? This is Saturday, right? Yes. Deeper than G. Hey. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. This is fun. Close your mics. Close your microphones. Okay. Thank you. Some people step away. We understand that. Now, when Allah discusses day and night in the Quran, he's not talking about the 24 hour day, 12 hours day, 12 hours night. Here's your other hint from Imam Muhammad. He said, if you could have figured it out with your own brain, that's not what Allah is discussing. So the average brain knows that there's hours of daylight and hours of nighttime. So Allah didn't have to put that in scripture. You could figure that out on your own just by studying the fitrah. But what you would not have been able to discover are the zodiacal day and the zodiacal night, because it takes science to do that. You have to know how to divide those 12 hours of day into three sections. Four, four, four. Uh, pardon me, four sections. You have to learn how to do that. Okay. So in this case, the zodiac into six sections, actually, if it's 12 hours. So the zodiacal day includes Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, and Virgo. The zodiacal night includes Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. Now, which ones are we talking about when we're discussing only Aleph Lam Ming? Where would this end? How, which three of these are we discussing? Anyone can answer. Aries, Taurus, Gemini. Excellent. Those three, that's it. Uh -huh. So wherever you see it, and that's why I'm throwing it all over the place. So when you run into it in anything you read that deals with this, this is what Aleph means. This is what Lamb means. This is what Gemini means. Aleph is Aries. Lamb is Taurus. Mean is Gemini. I can prove this to you a thousand different ways, but we don't have the time. I think I've given you enough that if you went and studied it independently, you'll grow into more understanding. Okay, they are a part of the zodiacal day. These signatures are part and parcel of the zodiacal night. Let's move a little bit further, and I believe you'll understand better. Now, the impregnating, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to uh, mute you guys, and when you're ready to speak or ask a question, just unmute your phones just so that noise won't come out in the uh, recording. The impregnating of the earth with the sun's light, that happens in springtime. That represents the true beginning of the year. So although they tell us that January 1st is the first day of a new year, that's wrong. They okie doked us. Nowhere else on the earth does their new year start in the cold, wintry, snow-filled part of the year. January. No, there were groups of Europeans who misunderstood the fit law. And because many of them come out of cold and dark parts of the, of the planet, they, they wanted it to favor their particular climate. So they moved it from the sunny, sunshine, fresh air stage and state of Aries in March. March 21st is when spring begins. That's the real new year. Coming into April, that's the real new year for most places around the planet. But they switched it 
from spring to winter. So understand that. There's a Fitra-based platform for what we're saying. So anywhere in the Quran that speaks to these particular signatures, they're going to be speaking to phenomenon that happens in that part of the year, that season of the year. You won't understand it until you go back and read the Quran or until I show you the references from the Quran. And then you'll say, oh, man, I've been reading that all the time. I didn't realize it was connected to Aries. Well, I've been reading about that, and I didn't realize it was connected. You know, when uh, Allah told Musa, slay the heifer, I didn't realize the heifer was the bull of Taurus, see? Because you're not familiar with the fitrah. And if you don't know the fitrah, you can't read the Quran yet as a fitrah revelation. So every day, we spoke about the year, March, April, May, June, July, you know, but Allah clocked that same fitra pattern into every day. And if you look at the first 12 hours of the day, they match Aries, Taurus, Gemini. So this Aleph Lamim phenomenon is happening every day, all of the time. Aries, in this case, is that period of time between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. That's when the air, the new air, that's why it smells so fresh in the morning. Because it's new, it's invigorating, it's inspirational, it's, it's, uh, it's an initiative. Now it's time to get up. I need to do something, initiate something. That's Aries between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. That's Aleph, Aries. Aleph, the spine, time to stand up. You need your spine more when you stand up than when you're laying in the bed. You're putting your spine to rest. You're taking the pressure off your spine. But at 6 a.m. when it's time to get up and get ready to go to work in the field or at the job, that's when your spine starts taking on the pressure. Aleph. So that's 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Then you get to work. You get to the field or whatever your day's work is. And from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. is Taurus because Taurus represents hard work that the uh, bull and the cow is going to do in making that milk or, or pulling that plow or whatever you, whatever you have that bovine doing. That's Taurus. It's, it represents, earth, it's earthy. They call it an earth sign. Aries is an air sign. Air rises, like you rise in the morning, right? But Taurus is earthy. It's solid. It's working energy. That's lamb. Then 10 a.m. to 12 noon, is Gemini, and that's a gas sign where the energy is more vibrant. That's when you're traveling. You finish doing your work, now you're going to travel, you're going to go get some lunch, or you're going to go to a different job, or you're going to do something. And in the process of doing that, you're going to run into other people like yourself, and you're going to begin to communicate. See? So you go from what I described last week as Aries in the head, Taurus in the neck, and the neck is what allows you to communicate, begin communicating. But that communication also takes place when you get to Gemini, which are the twin shoulders, because they have to work together. They have to communicate with each other. You need to pick up something heavy. Okay, you need both hands and both arms. It's not that heavy. You do it. You communicate with just the right arm. Communication begins beneath the neck, the tool that Allah gave you for communicating. Twist the body, right? That You only do that in this area where the tools begin to take over. Your two lungs, your two uh, uh, um, uh, kidneys, you know, all of these tools that Allah put in the torso. So you got the Aries and you have what follows as signatures in the body. I'm saying these things to you over and over again so you realize that these are not superficial letters that Allah put that he says you can never know the meaning to until you meet me in, in the paradise. That's not true. Everything in the Quran is discernible. Everything in the Quran is knowable. And the more you know about those powerful, powerful so-called abbreviated letters, the more you're going to learn about what's happening inside of you as functionality.
And when you begin to become more familiar with what Allah has attached to them in terms of the information in the surah that's speaking to those signatures, then you're going to say, let me see how I can relate what Allah is saying about the heifer, for instance, to what's happening inside of me. Is there a heifer in me that I need to slay? That's how you have to begin thinking. What is Allah speaking to as functionality or dysfunctionality in me? Am I dysfunctional like this heifer was dysfunctional? Because when they asked Musa, what heifer? He said, the one that is not trained to, to water the field or, or, or you know, uh, do anything to the soil to bring about growth. <laughs> it's just a pretty, a pretty girl. It ain't doing no work. So it was dysfunctional. So I want to know where that heifer is in me so I can get rid of it. That's what the Quran is for. Not to say, look at what happened with the Jews, you know, 5,000 years ago. Or look, look what happened with the Christians 2,000 years. No, it's to say what's happening with me in 2023. And how do I apply that, not just in the theoretical sense, but in the practical sense. So what I need to do based on the guidance of Allah for me in 2023, going into the unforeseeable future. That's the guidance I want from the Quran. If you want something from the past or something that's just history or something that's just hadith and, you know, just praising the prophet, becoming frothy mouthed about the prophet's adventures and all that, you just want a fairy tale. There's plenty of those out there. But if you want something from the Quran that represents practical wisdom, then pay attention to the method that we're providing for you. Because all of these things are operating inside of you. So as the sun or the solar energy travels through these signatures from Aries all of the way around to Pisces, Aries all of the way around to Pisces, you've probably seen it in an ancient uh, symbol called the Ourobora, where the snake is put into a round circle and it has it so that its tail is stuck in its mouth. See, here's the head, the body of the snake going around like this. And then the tail being grabbed or grasped by the mouth. That's called the aura bora. And it's talking about the 12 signatures of the zodiac. Can't, can't see where you are. You do you have a picture up? No, I don't. Okay. I'm okay. showing you. Can you see my picture? No, I can't see your picture. Okay, you can't see me either. Okay, I can see me. So you'll you'll miss that part, but just kind of see it in your mind's eye. Okay. Okay. And uh I think if you Google. I'm not sure the correct spelling of Aura Bora, but I think it's like O-U-R-A and then Bora, B-O-R-A. Try something like that and I'm sure the right thing will pop up. Okay. It's just a the, the snake in a, a circular. Aura Bora, snake and mouth. There you go. Yeah, you According can Google that. According to Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's, that's a pro right there. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right. All right, let's keep going though. So what it is saying is that as the sun, let me move this so I can manipulate this better. Hold on. Okay. One moment. As the sun, meaning the solar energy, travels through these signatures, it releases its specific energies as assistance to those needing to operate within the framework of these conditions. Now, that's a lot of blah, 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 blah language, but here it is. If this is the daylight hours, sunrise, see here, that's Aries, sunrise, air rises, that's Aries. Okay. That's going to be Taurus. That's going to be Gemini. So here's your Aleph Lamim right here in this arc. It's the first quarter of the arc. And it's coming out of Pisces. That's, a, that's the nighttime sign. So it goes from this signature Aries all of the way to Libra. And then from Libra all of the way down, they call that the underworld in scripture. And this would be the snake's tail. The snake's head would be here. The body would curl here arc come back down and then the tail will be stuck back in the mouth of the head of the snake that's the aura bora so these first six months represent day zodiacal day the 
latter six months represents zodiacal night. So when you hear Allah talking about the day and the night, he's talking about the zodiacal day and night on the most part. But although that's the zodiacal day and night that's going to give you your annual year, there's also a daily arc that begins at these times that I mentioned. Aries then for the day, the 12 hour part of the day, the first part of the day is going to be from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Those two hours, that's Aries. From 8 a.m. To, to 10 a.m., that's Taurus. From 10 a.m. to noon, that's Gemini. That's your Elif Lam meme on a daily schedule. If anyone is not understanding that, let me know. So Elif Lam meme is during the year. And Elif Lam meme is also visiting you every single day. Whatever the energy of Aries is, Whatever Aries is suggesting that you do as an activity, listen to this very carefully. The best time for you to do that activity on any given day is during this time right here, 6 to 8 a.m. If you want to be inspired, read your Quran, do your dhikr, especially at this time of day. Do the salat, whatever you think the salat is. I'm not going to dictate to you what salat is. Do the best according to what you think it is. This is one of the best times during a given day to do that activity. If you're going to endeavor to do something that involves work, heavy work, you're going to help build something or you're going to help, uh, you know, carry something, try to schedule it for this time of day. That's when you're going to have the most energy. You haven't eaten a big old breakfast. You're not slowed down. Your metabolism hasn't fallen. You, you, you're still in it to win it right here. If you need to travel, then 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. is going to be the best time. You're going to take time out maybe to eat some lunch then to get refueled. You're going to take that time to run into other people who might not have been up as early as you. <laughs> You've read it in your household. And you're going to use this time to communicate. What are your plans for the rest of the day? What are your plans for the rest of the week? See, this is the best time to begin discussing those plans. See, until the human being gets serious about designing his and her life so that they fit a fitra-based plan and program, you're going to have a hit and miss life. And that's why things are so sporadic for us because we're doing things out of sync with the energy that Allah has created in order to assist you in that thing. So it's really just a matter of consciously paying attention to the fitra of your daily life, daily activity, and daily energies. It's really that simple. And I hope everyone is understanding the importance of that. You have a daily fitra activity chart that you should be developing. And the last thing I'll say is something I mentioned last week, and that is that the triune brain that we always mention and have been mentioning now for several years, actually, are also perfectly or is also perfectly accord, uh, coordinated to uh, sync up with the, with the Aleph Lam meme principle also. On the most part, Aleph is going to be the beginning point of the brain, and that is the brain stem. See, that connects to your spine. The brain stem connects to your spine, going down. That's your Aleph. Your lamb is the lambic or the limbic system, the mammalian brain. And your meme. The Gemini, it, it represents the two halves of your brain, right hemisphere, left hemisphere. They're always twins to look for in that regard. So I'm showing you, the scholars say, they know, there's no way of explaining that if that meme, only Allah knows. I'm telling you to go back to them same people. You should be writing term papers in low hollow on this one subject I'm giving you. And then present it as your hypothesis, as your theory, if, if you will. 
and say, no, I see Elif Lam Mim as possible. Don't ever say that. I know this for sure. Just say, yeah, this is my hypothesis. Like you have a, a hypothesis. Your scholars have had thousands of hypotheses. This is our hypothesis from, from America, from Muslim minds, thinking minds in America. I believe that Aleph is connected to the spine, the spinal cord through the brain stem of the first brain called the reptilian brain or the R complex. And I think that's Aleph. And I think that Lamb represents the limbic brain and its emotional and memory center. And I think that the meme represents the twin halves of the brain, Gemini, the twin halves of the brain. And if that's all you said, you will get the respect of world leaders if that ever gets out. And watch, I'm going to prove it to you because I'm going to put it out there and watch what comes back. The scholars, they are so thirsty for this that they will thank me and anybody I point to that I say, help me do this. And I'm going to point to the whole nunetic, nunetics experience. I'm going to say, well, if you find a nunetics learner, thank them because this is, this is our brainchild. This is our inheritance. And don't be afraid to tell them. This is our inheritance beneath the Wallace. Oh, I'm sorry. Wallace is Wallace. Wallace Muhammad, the son of Elijah Muhammad. Don't be afraid to mention his name. And this is 30 something, 33 years of his teaching us and advising us. And following through on his hints and clues, as he called them. And if you want to mention Benjamin Bilal, you know, fit him in there somewhere in between all of that, if you want to, if you don't have to. I'm not depending on anybody to make me famous or popular. Whatever's going to happen with me is going to happen because of Allah. Just like he put me here with you, he, he's going to put me with so many people on this planet that you will be proud to know that I'm now in Libya somewhere or in uh, Czechoslovakia or somewhere in the Amazon teaching people. Allah Kabir. Mm -hmm. And some of you sincere ones are going to be right there with me. Yeah. Got a sister from the UK. I'm meeting with her on Monday on a one-on-one -on -one Zoom webinar. She is so thrilled to be able to sit with me and me give her personal time, give her an hour just for her to ask questions. She's been looking on YouTube day after day after day after. And she loves nunetics. See? And that's what I'll do for any one of you. You know that I've done it and will continue to do that. I'm not an untouchable. I'm not one of those persons. You can call me. You can write me. You can email me. You can text me. I'm going to get back to you. Right, Salim Muhammad? You might have his phone muted right now. You understand? These people know. They can call. They can reach me. They know how to reach me. I just say, stop I'm not, not talking to Salim. I'm talking in general. Y'all, please stop trying to call me at 10, 11 o'clock at night. Respect the idea that the instructor has business hours. <laughs> this is my business. Stop calling me at 9.30 at night for something you could have just texted me to ask me or waited until tomorrow morning. And I, when I say morning, I mean, don't call me at 7 in the morning. I'm not up again. I'm up, I meditate, I go back to bed. I don't get to bed until 3 or 4 in the morning on the average night. So for you to call me at 7.30 in the morning, that's bothersome. Because you're waking me up. I have to keep my phone open for emergencies. My sister's in the hospital. You know the whole story. So I can't just shut my phone down. But you call me now. You're waking my wife up. You're waking me up to say what? Good morning. You have to come in to better fit for our sense is all I'm saying. 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock when I know I'm up in Adam. Then you call me or text me first. Say, are you up? Are you available? Most of you do that. Are you available to talk now? Instruct. If not, I'll call you back at a late. That's what I like about y'all. That level of respect. I need to ask you this in person. It's a personal question. Are you up now? If not, can you give me a better time to text you or call you back? That's when you hear from me. And y'all know that. Okay. So that's all we're going to do for today. You've got an Adlif Lam meme out the kazoo if you'll accept me expressing it like that. And we're going to pick up from here because we got, um, man, we got nine more signatures to go. Actually, 11. Because two of them are doubles. And they are powerful. And I can't drop all of them on you in one session. It would, it would really really mess you up for me to try to 
put all of that into one session. I have to go slow and I have to repeat and reinforce and reevaluate so that you'll come into better and better value of what's being said. All right. And I truly didn't mean to keep you this long tonight. I wanted this to be about a one hour, one hour and a half session. Okay. So we have a couple of questions in the queue. Let's see what's going on here. And then we will conclude. Hold on one moment. Still trying to learn how to manipulate. Okay. If, if you're okay. Uh, is that Habiba and Bashir, I think, that have questions? Habiba, you go first, please. If I'm seeing this correctly. I think that was from the previous thing. I don't I don't know how to make uh -huh. the uh, hand down. Okay. okay. I'm no problem. Bashir, are you still having a question or did you not put your hand down before? No, no, I I, I did want I'll put my hand down now. Uh okay. the question was uh when they Constantine was the one that changed the time from from the original time from when it was springtime, which is March, which is supposed to be the beginning of the year, to all yes. these Gregorian calendars and all these different type of calendars to mm -hmm. throw everybody off. And he he did that on purpose. One, to codify what he wanted people to believe, no, which was nothing. He just wanted them to follow his lead and confuse everybody. That was what the Council of Nicaea. And I'm not saying this to just just throw this shit is, around. This is history. No, that's that's truth. And to throw stuff around just to, you know, but that's what happened. And that's how and why it happened, why they started changing these times of the year to confuse people. And over time, it did confuse people because before we were in tune to nature. So well, you couldn't fool us like that. But in time, mm -hmm. we were uh -huh. able to uh, be fooled and entangled with all this different garbage that they got us wanting to think and recite and on the mind. That's mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely correct. Spot on. Yep. Now I have a question here. See my question, Nevada, please. Examples of form and function being masculine and feminine. I think we went over that though. Um, so you may have to revisit the replay on this one. But in short, I said that form, because it's on the outside, it represents the masculine, like the man is supposed to be on the outside protecting, right? What's inside. That's the man's job, the masculine role. So form is masculine. Form is the first thing you see. You see the roundness of the sun, or you see the thickness of the bark on the tree. That's the form. But what's happening in the tree, as far as functionality, how does the tree bring that water up from the ground through the roots so that it gets all the way up to the leaves and the fruit? That's deeper science. So the, the function of a thing is deeper science because it's more internal. You have to spend more work on trying to understand it, like you have to spend more work on trying to understand females. Those brothers, we understand each other right away. Yeah, I understand. All right, I'll see you there. Try that with your wife, brother. Just giving us some simple answer about where you're going tomorrow <laughs> or what you were doing yesterday. <laughs> She wants more information. You know why she deserves more information? Because her information has to be shared with sometimes with more people than just you. She's got to communicate your message and interpret it for her children. Well, daddy said, you understand what I'm saying? So because she has more mouths to feed, she's got more young intellects to help develop. She's got to have more nuanced information than just a general kind of conversation we have with the average male. Because her message has to go deeper, her roots are deeper psychologically and emotionally than the male. So you have to spend more time nurturing that plant or that tree, taking care of that tree, pruning that tree, getting the weeds out from the garden. You got to spend more time doing that. You can't just go and throw some water on it and say it's going to grow the way it's supposed to grow. No, you start to see weeds. You start to see concerns around the female that you know she's worried about. Maybe she doesn't come to you every time she has these concerns, but you see the concerns. All right, husband, he's, he's, he's been missing in action for three days. He comes home, he hardly speaks, he eats, he gets up in the morning, he goes out and he only have a job. And then he come back, he don't tell me where he been. That's causes of concern. She's sensitive like that because now she's got to display um, 
togetherness, you know, a together personality when she's got to raise the children or, or speak to the children and, and teach them what you're supposed to be teaching her. But how's she going to do it when she's feeling a certain way about you now? So we have to approach the feminine side with more care and consideration because if that becomes dysfunctional, the whole family becomes dysfunctional. A lot of families where dad is kind of nutsy. He, he's out there, but the, the woman's got it together. The mother's got it together. The family stays intact. But if the mother's kind of cuckoo for cocoa puffs, that becomes a problem in the family. You've got to be able to temper her and, and really provide for her what she needs, especially emotionally. Then the functionality of the family will return or will begin to develop. You'll see it right away. Just start saying the right things treating her the right way, addressing issues of concern. If you have issues of concern about things she says or the way she behaves and things, you bring them to her attention, but bring it, do it nicely and gently and lovingly and compassionately. Not like you're Stalin or Hitler or somebody talking to your wife. You are the form. You're the out front one defending the borders and all of that of your home and your, you know, and your whatever, you know, when you go out, you're making sure it's safe in that area. You don't bring her out in the middle of the hood with her Gucci purse, you say, baby, no, I don't think this is not the day to be in Walmart because these people, are, they're looking for somebody to rob on this Black Friday. So you have to be the protector because you're out front, you're the form. But just make sure that the feminine role is protected because it's in fact a more precious role than the masculine role. Let the masculine role take the hit. Let the form take the dent or the bump, but try your best to protect the functionality because one small screw gone wrong inside the computer can mess up your whole operation. Just putting the wrong screw or not putting the screw back where it belonged and eventually the stuff inside starts to discombobulate and fall apart. And before you know it, you got a blank screen. That's how life is. If you don't make the, the adjustments to the inside of yourself, the feminine you, inside the function in you, that's the feminine you, male or female, the feminine in you is the functionality in you. You have to make sure that it's always finely tuned. Make sure that the dust is blown away when you open up the face of it. Yeah, get rid of the dust. Shine it up a little bit. Make sure you put the screws back in the right places. Then put the face back on. All right. Any other concerns? Are all the prophets classified or to be seen as Aries and Aleph? Good question. No, indeed. That's why when we go further through the rest of the letters, you're going to see that there are different prophets that represent different signatures. And I'll give you a quick, for instance, the prophet Yaqub, Jacob, represents Leo, the lion. So no, the prophets represent just like in uh in the story of Moses, you have uh, Musa and the 12 tribes. Those 12 tribes represent the, the entire Zodiac. In the Bible, Jesus and his 12 disciples represents the sun, Jesus, and the 12 signatures, Aries through Pisces, that the sun is ruling over. So the Quran has its equivalent in other prophets that represent other signatures. Yasin. Off, they represent other prophets and their missions. Nor they represent other uh, prophets who are on a different kind of mission. So we're going to be seeing that as we go along in these uh, minimum ten classes. I'm almost sure it's going to be a little bit more than ten classes. Well, thank you so much for that because I was um, uh, writing today. I sent you some stuff already. I don't know if you saw it or not, but not yet. I was not um, going on the class from last week, and I was thinking that. Yeah, I was classifying the Khalifa as one thing, but now because of this class uh, and, and mm -hmm. what you just answered, that I realized that it's Beautiful. not that way at all. Beautiful. The Khalifa okay. just represents the, the, the initiation of the human life. No, I was doing the triune brain. I was doing yeah. the triune brain and I was using Adam, Eve, and the serpent mm -hmm. um, to classify that. And then I was thinking... Uh, well, yeah. anyway, you, you yeah. answered my question. Yeah, but remember, yeah. the Khalifa is also Alif Lam Mim. The Khalifa okay. is the initiator. Remember, Allah says, when, uh, 
I am in the process of making a Khalifa. So the Khalifa yes. was being initiated. Whenever you read the Quran about something happening at the beginning of the day, it's talking about the Aries quality. Yes, Khalifa, I, I, I was um, um, I was um, classifying. Um, uh, I, my whole thing today was about Aries as the ram in the bush and uh, how the Khalifa rises to a certain um, understanding in the triune brain to realize that you know, stepping out of faith is uh, the, the ram in the bush. Very so good. I, that's where correct. I was today. Right. So for the rest of the people, I want them to, to understand that Aleph, Lam, Mim is also the Khalifa. Hear what I'm saying? Yes. Aleph by itself is Khalatha. Can you see that? Yes. The A sound is a guttural to match with the Tha sound. The Lam in Aleph matches with the Lam in Tha. Uh, in, uh, pardon me, matches with the, the Lam in Khalatha. Yeah. yeah, matches with the Lam in Aleph. Mm -hmm. And of course, the fa in aleph mm -hmm. matches with the fa in khalifa. So aleph, the letter by itself is a khalifa. It's an initiator. That's why it's at the beginning of the alphabet. Thank you so much, Instructor Bilal. You're very welcome. <laughs> and the beginning of the human life, as I said last week, is the infant. And there's no infant that comes here without shedding the blood of the mother. Are you going to make one who's going to make mischief and shed the blood? That's the infant. Every infant makes mischief. St stick around the infant long enough. You're going to see the mischief maker in that infant. <laughs> He'll be sitting there talking. He'd be like, ate your dinner. You know, he put his... The hand in your oatmeal, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Just spread it all over his face and just a, a natural born mischief maker. Yes. But that's how he learns. That's how the Khalifa learns. So the angel didn't understand that. They said, are you going to take this guy who's taking his oatmeal and smearing it all over, all over his face? The one who came out the womb bloody. That one you're going to make the leader? You'll never be able to see it by looking at the infant. How is he going to rule the world? He can't even rule his diaper. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I gotta, I gotta listen to him groan to know that he's making a movement. So I think he's going to, uh, in his diaper. He's, he's gonna rule the world, Allah. Yeah, you kidding, right? You, you, you all got jokes. So that's what they ran to say. And Allah said, nevertheless, nevertheless, when I have breathed into him of my roof, yeah, you're gonna pay a different kind of attention to this Khalifa. So that's the point we're at now. Nunetics contains the ruh that the entire Muslim world has been waiting to breathe in. And yes. when we do, the ones they wrote off as being the puppets of the Arabs and the puppets of the Takis and the puppets of the Egyptians and the puppets and the, you know, the, the black folks who, who copying everybody else in the Muslim world. See how they dress? They dress like the Arabs. You know, they wear the sandals of the Pakistanis. They wear the the the, the thobe of the Egyptian. They wear the turban of, you see, they, they just look at us like, we just influenced by the entire Muslim world and we don't have our own identity. Allah said, yeah, you're looking at him in his infancy. Yeah, the baby's going to pick up his mother's hat. He's going to put it on his hair. He's going to do all that. That's what the African-American Muslim has been doing. He put on the hat of the khaki, Pakistani. You know, he put on the slippers and it's just sandals and the miswak of the Egyptian. Daliba. Yeah, yeah, the the the, 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 the you know, of, the, uh, of whoever, you know, Central Asia or but Allah said, you're looking at the wrong stage in his development. You're looking at his form. I'm about to breathe into him some functionality. And when I do, I'm commanding all of you to make sajda to him. He didn't even say to me. He said to him. So all of the angels are going to be operating for you once you understand what the ruh of Allah is and how to ingest it. And the Quran it tells you exactly how to get that power. We'll be going through that in the regular class beginning on Sunday. How do we come into a situation where the powers of the world become 
power is at our disposal by the help of Allah, by the permission of Allah. How does mm -hmm. that happen? It's in the Quran how it happens. But you have to come with a particular mindset and a particular spirit. Allah says, they ask thee, when they ask thee about me, I am near. Mm -hmm. I answer the dua of every day when he calls, when she calls. He said, I answer the dua of every caller when he calls. So if you ain't calling or you don't know how to call, if you, you don't know the vehicle, the, 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 the method of calling, that's why Allah is not answering you. Not that he won't. How could I answer you? You ain't even pick up the phone. You didn't even text a message. It's still in your hand, dear instructor. I don't know what's on the other. <laughs> you got to send that to me. You have to communicate with Allah for him to answer you. And Allah says he answers every call. If Adolf Hitler tried to communicate with Allah, Allah would answer him. Might not be the answer he likes, but Allah will answer him. He <laughs> answered the Israeli. He answered the German. He answered everybody. The Saudi, he answered everybody when they call. But Allah says behind that, how many with a will will answer my call? That's the caveat. He's not just here to answer your call. He's not a genie, a jinni. He's Allah, the source creator. So how many will answer his? He's got a call that he's calling you to. So are you trying to get him to answer you, but you don't want to answer anything that Allah asks you to do? No deal. Deal's off. Because all Allah is asking you to do is build upon your human excellence. He doesn't need anything from you. Build upon your human excellence so that you can be a better social person to other people in the social society, in the social world. You can't do anything for Allah. He's asking you to do something for you and for other people like you. Right. All right. Some, uh, someone had to hand up and then we got to go. Is that Habiba this time? <laughs> or did you still not lower your hand? It's me. I I, I put it down. I it's me. I'm I'm asking. I'm saying it, it occurred. The epiphany occurred to me as you were speaking that form and function. Understanding this form and function is the breathing of the ruh. Yeah, that's what gives the functionality. Before that, yes. it's just form. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. It, it, it just occurred to me as you were saying it. I. I, I didn't know it. You know, you hear it, but to be able to piece it together, you have to be in the room. You know, you don't get it in, until you can hear it over and over again, but it doesn't mean anything until it's hard hit, until the word gets inside the head. And yeah, then it yeah. goes through the mechanism of really uh, yeah. having an idea of what it what it means. Yeah. I have to be you able to have, you have to hear it different ways sometimes. Sometimes the, you know, the way you heard it before, you still don't understand. But if you can explain something from three or four different angles, that last angle might be your angle of understanding. So yeah, you're right. That's why I repeat things different ways, because different people have different levels of grasping things that are being said. Okay. So I think that concludes our remarks for today. Imam, I just wanted to, or Issa, I type it to you on the gravity. That was kind of, that kind of grabbed me when you're talking yeah. about the gravity. Yeah, I thought it would. You, 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 you type, type me, text me on that one. All right. All right. Alhamdulillah. I'm so, grateful. Thank you all. Alhamdulillah. I'm grateful. I, I, this was a blessed call tonight. <laughs> and, uh, Remember, if you want a replay, it's $20 per replay. And you can pay yes. for it the same way that you paid the $10 to get in. It's not a lot of money, but it's sure going to make you listen to it if you pay for it. Mm -hmm. And use it to take notes, to give yourself homework. I'm not going to give you any, not hardcore homework. You use it for your own homework. I'll know that you're doing homework by the answers you give the next time I talk to you. You'll be right on it like most of you were today. I know the majority of you have to be studying to be that quick on the draw, giving answers like you've done. All right. There are stronger ones among you who are here to help you also. Adib Abdullah, he's at the top of his game of people you should call 
or email for, for assistance because he's got this down like the back of his hand. William Safi is another one who's, 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 who's coming close up behind Adib. Bashir is going to be another one who can explain this in no time flat. Ahmed Hassan, he's being shy today, but he can answer anything I've asked tonight without repeating me. So we've, we've come upon a very beautiful time. Ezekiel's another one. He's quietly in the background. See, he wants to see what you're going to do. All right. So these are people who will be teaching their own classes pretty soon. They'll be doing 15 minutes with me or maybe an hour. Their own class. They'll be teaching you. They'll show you what they know. They're being shy right now on purpose. And I, I like that they're in the background right now because I want to hear from the new people. And I don't want the new people to be intimidated but thinking they'll never learn it because I'll never give an answer like he just gave. Well, yes, you will. Maybe better. If you study. You have here, here's something you have that you don't have with probably any other imam or instructor or teacher or counselor or coach. You have access to me direct. Go to the website. Can someone put this in the chat, Patricia? Go to nuneticsinstitute.org. Nuneticsinstitute.org. And you can make you can make an appointment, a formal appointment with instructor Benjamin Bilal for a minimum amount of money. I think it's something like thirty dollars for thirty minutes, fifty dollars for sixty minutes. So this way, I'm I, I'm I'm guaranteed that you're not going to waste my time talking stuff for an hour before you get to your point because you're paying for it. But if you give me $30 for 30 minutes, I'm going to give you 30 minutes. That will be 30 hours worth of pleasure in your ears. Ask Mikkel, Samad, Michael Adcock, Amina Adcock, William Safi, ask uh, who left here today, Wali Udin Sabir, Dawood Sharif, they were here this morning. They sat with me for an hour and a half. And that's what they walked away from. Uh, ask them what they walked away with when they left this house. As far as jewels, they wish they had recorded it. That's why I tell you, always carry a little pocket recorder, digital recorder. Just carry it in your car, in your pocket. You never know what you're going to run into. When you talk to me on the phone, you should have a recorder. That's how you're going to grow in this field of knowledge. Uh, excuse me, instructor. Uh, probably a lot of people don't realize that the I think so. Just about every cell phone has a voice recorder on it. If we were yes, using. you're right. That's right. Absolutely correct. I hope everyone heard Ahmed. If you have an iPhone, especially, or you know, whatever the Android, whatever, all of them have voice recorders. Ain't no such thing as making a, a new phone, at least that doesn't have a voice recorder. You just have to learn how to work it. So as soon as I call, I don't know if you can do it while you're on a call, but in any case, if you're here live or something like that. Or even if you're uh, doing the webinar, people record the webinars while I'm talking because they don't want to wait the, what, two hours or something before they, uh, before I send them. They, they can't help to just hear it back right away. So they record it. I can hear the recorders being accidentally replayed while I'm talking. And I love that. Yes, record me all you want. But those are people who want to hear it back and take notes right away. That's a wonderful thing. But yeah. Your cell phone has a recorder in a very clear, nice one, right, Ahmed? Very nice on these on these cell phones. Professional quality. So feel free. Someone asked a question, will I send my notes? I used to do that. I'm not going to do that anymore. Because you'll learn better. Yeah, you'll learn better if you take notes while you're looking at the screen and pause it. It's the same notes. Pause it. Take notes. Press the play button. Let it go a little further. Pause it. See, you have to understand that my, uh, my average class, I never finished the average group of notes that I have. So if I have to send you the notes from that session, you now you're giving me an extra job. Now I got to edit what I didn't yet get to in order to send you the edited version that you saw and that you already have in the replay on the screen. So I'm doing double work 
and you're doing less work because if you were to take literal notebook notes, you'd remember this better than if you just depended on what's typed in front of you. Even what I have in front of me, you should copy them in your own handwriting into um, composition notebooks. It'll stick more when you have to. William knows he's a professional writer. Wally Udine, he's a professional author. You know, others of you, you do a lot of writing. You know the value of writing it with in your own handwriting. Farad obviously knew it. He made you, you couldn't join the Nation of Islam unless you wrote his letter in, your, in his handwriting. So handwriting is important. It helps you to go to the limbic brain quicker, the memory bank, the memory brain quicker. So just take the time to do it. Do it a little at a time. Okay. And then it defeats the purpose of me turning the whole thing into a book because you got all the pages already. <laughs> and I had people that say, well, I, I, I got most, I used to give the notes away. You asked them with every class I used to, I used to give you also the notes and there were people on the other side, uh, uh, uh printing them up until they said, look, look at how many notes I have from your class instructor. I said, well, sure. If you was an honest person, you, you could put that together, print that and you have a book that I don't know about, but that's extra work for me is what I'm saying. I took the time to print, to write all that out. <laughs> well, you should take the time to write it out as homework assignments for yourself to do it. You'll love it. Once you do it, you'll, you'll understand. You'll learn this very quick. Just write it yourself. Okay. It's a beautiful thing where you can just, you know, print it from what I send you and put it in a, a you know, folder, take it with you to work. Or that's a beautiful thing. But uh, take the time, just retype what I gave you. If you just need to have it in print. Or just hold on a little longer because all of what we're giving you in this uh, abbreviated letters class is going to eventually be a book. It'll be a book on that subject. So if you can wait another month, you'll have it as a little book booklet. Okay. Hope that answered your question. In in instructor, can I just, mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to underline what you just said, not that, really, that, that, that it's needed, but, but it might help somebody that's listening. Uh, the learning process you know, when, when you actually physically take your hand, Allah lets us know that, that he teaches us with the pen, you know. So the, the process that where it registers in your mind, where, where, where it actually becomes a part of you, especially your subconscious, it's an extremely uh, important part of that process to actually to write with your hand, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's just no way around. It's no substitute for it. And that's why our children are becoming more and more unfit in, as far as literacy. Because they practically write nothing anymore, not even in school. They're all working on iPads and all that other stuff. And they, they talk about the danger of using your thumbs for learning and not the rest of your fingers. So when you're texting, texting, texting all day long, that's only activating a certain level of your brain's capacity, as opposed to using all five digits. At least when we were typing on typewriters, you know, we used all five digits. But now that we're texting, it's just the thumbs, right? Okay. So you now when our children go to write, it looks like graffiti in the notebook. It looks like what we used to call graffiti on the wall when I was in high school. And they, they can't write even, legibly anymore. Or they true. never learned to write legibly. They don't our teach children, the script. Our children they don't are not teach even the learning the script anymore. Spell. Our children are not teach even learning the script. Spell. That's right. Script is off the off the board. The no more script, and the yeah. print is illegible, and their uh -huh. spelling is horrendous. Okay. Uh. No commas. No capitalization. <laughs> How are they graduating? Uh -huh. That's our job. We also, have to remake the world. Yeah. Also, and also, uh, Imam, in our study, we should have a map and, and an ethnomology, uh, ethnomology um, G dictionary at our, yeah. at our tip when we study. Because the map, it gives you visual and it helps you locate, you know, the, um, the area you're talking about reference to. Yeah. So These you have access, keep access to your computer. Have... Um, most of you have the physical Nunetics book, but if you were to get the PDF version of the Nunetics book, you can have that open on a separate page while we're on the, in the class. You can have it open to the Continental Connections Grimm's Law page. Mm -hmm. So whenever I, yeah, whenever I use a letter, 
you go to the Grimm's Law page and it'll show you all the other letters that, is connect, that it connects with. Just like we're doing the Khalafa. Wasn't that fun today? Mm -hmm. We can do that for any Quranic word you mention. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to start growing like this. But if, if, you, if you have to struggle to think about, oh, what is lamb connected to? And it takes you five minutes to say raw, you're moving too slow. Absolutely. <laughs> so either get the book or get the book and then retype it so you have it and print it and always have it in front of you while the class is going on. Or get the PDF version and have it open on a separate page. You know, but a lot of people still don't know how to manipulate their computers where they can open one and close one and you know, younger people have that kind of savvy, but some of us older people, I'm still moving slow with which page is open, which one is not, you know, which one accidentally closed. You know, I see a lot of people here, they make a mistake, they hit the wrong button, they got to keep, you know, dialing back in, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I don't let this person in seven times already. I don't know what's wrong with their computer that they keep falling off, but sometimes it's your internet service. So the best thing is to have a print copy right, of the mm -hmm. Continental Connections, print it out. We can send it to the group. I have it. I mean, I've sent it out before. But it's the first few pages. You'll see it in the first few pages of Nunetics. It'll say Grimm's Law, then Continental Connections, and you can roll from there. You can spend a whole day making those Continental Connections. That is where the fun is. My brain does not rest. Two in the morning, I'm still making consonantal connections for words that I read in the Quran. Okay. Fun time is officially over. <laughs> Gotta go. And I really appreciated this session. So thank all of you who contributed out loud or in silence. As long as you were here, I'm sure you got your money's worth, much more than your money's worth. Again, if you want tonight's replay and you haven't paid for it yet, some of you, most of you have already. So most of you have paid for 10 sessions in, a, in one shot. That's a beautiful thing. That helps me tremendously. I thank you for that. Some of you are paying a class at a time. That's fine. Some of you have paid for the live classes, but you haven't paid for any replays. So just understand that even if you were here live for the $10, the replays are still $20. So if you want today's replay, just send the $20 and I will send you instantly upon receiving your uh, funds, the replay. Of course, you have to wait for it to hook, as I say. So another hour from now should be ready. And I'll send it to, I send it to you as a private YouTube viewing. So it becomes a part of your YouTube library. You can't send it to anybody else who hasn't paid for it, but you can look at it on YouTube. You can carry it around in your phone and go to YouTube and it's right there, the class, like I normally do on YouTube, but it's not for the public. It's a private YouTube showing that I only send to the people who pay for it. But you can get last week's if you missed it or if you want to review that and you just get the replay, $20. But some people say, I give it to you on you know Tuesday. I'm, yeah, you give it to me on Tuesday. I'll send it to you today. It's not a money issue with me. Like Imam Muhammad said, it's not about the money. He said the money mm -hmm. makes you feel more responsible for studying it because you paid for it. <laughs> he said, when you give away things for free, people take it for granted. That's right. And that's a fact. That's a fact. So last word, we have a lot of very interesting and important people now starting to listen to our YouTube channel. And they're emailing me even more than they are leaving comments in the YouTube comment section or chat section. They are emailing me their interest in Nunetics. They don't ask fuddy-duddy questions. They just say, tell me what it costs. I'm ready to join. They, they haven't even heard how much it costs to join. They, they are, and they're not rich people. They are committed people. When they hear something that they know is such a phenomenon that if they lose this opportunity, it might not come across again in their lifetime. How much does it cost? And they go find the money. And I say $300, they don't even blink. Where do I send it? How do I send it? I'm in another country. How do we do this? I, I, need, to, I need to find a way to do this. 
committed people. I told you what happened. And this is just the, the beginning drips, the Aries portion of the opening up of the whole cascade frequencies. Trust me when I tell you that. Somebody has their phone open. Right? So we're just at the cusp of something great happening. That's why we can't afford to be bogged down in mundane arguments and stuff. We can't afford that right now. So many intelligent minds are going to be listening to these classes that you need for them to walk away with the right focus on what our priorities are in this language. And that begins with you paying meticulous attention. Someone making noise in the background that we need to hear? So anyway, as I was concluding, be well, treat the people around you well, practice a daily regimen of helping somebody other than yourself after you get up in the morning and take care of your personal self, immediately start charting the way for helping someone else by phone, a neighbor, family member, living with you, not living with you. And that, that, that assistance, that charity can come in the way of just giving them a, a, a good day greeting. Yeah, just thinking about you today. No, 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 no emergency or nothing. Auntie, I was thinking about you today. I just want to make sure that you started out with a good day on your mind. Have a great day. I love you so much. I miss you. I haven't seen you in months, but I was thinking about you. That's your good deed for the day. And Allah will bless you for that. And pay attention, expect blessings when you do good things because Allah promises you blessings for doing good things. I did something good for somebody and nobody did nothing good because you're looking for the same act to come back to you. I gave somebody $20, I didn't get that $20 back. That's not how it comes back to you. you know, I'm telling you, it's only gonna be in the hereafter when we actually discover how many things Allah actually saved us from. I mean, stuff that would have cost up, all, cost up our lives. If we had left the house five minutes earlier, five minutes earlier, we could have been shot or killed. That's the kind of mercy Allah is having on us. If we had went in that store this afternoon, instead of this morning, when it was safe, we went in the morning when it was safe, come to find out in that same store, three hours later, somebody got shot and killed. That could have been me. Who saved me from that? Allah saved me from that. Saying something out of sorts that could have caused you a whole lot of problems. Shaking on a business deal that you didn't thoroughly investigate. And you're looking at the contract and Allah says, no, uh -uh -uh. tell them you need another day on that. <laughs> that kind of thing. Allah saves us from these things every single day. So plan four and five things the night before that you're going to do for good reasons without looking for nothing back. Just say, I'm going to do these good things for these five people, or it could be for your dog. You know what I do, me and Karima, what we do when we have free hours? We look at videos of people who help other people and, and help animals escape traps. And you understand what I'm saying? A deer that got stuck in the, you know, that kind of the antlers got stuck. And how humans in Russia and all over the world they come to help these animals and the animal gets out and the animal romps away and so happy that it escaped death you know dogs that are all mangled up and you know take them to the dog a barber and the dog is shaving them you know the barber shaves the dog that washes the dog loves to take care of them. and that dog is like a human dog they're trying to lick him and kiss him and all that he's just hugging him jumping up on the man putting his arms around him Animals show so much appreciation. What's wrong with us? We have to start thinking like that. I'm going to be showing you some of those videos as we go along because they, they lighten my spirit. They make me feel like this is Sadaka here. You know, I'm leaving no $20 on a master table. This is Sadaka. See? You have to think about Sadaka on a different level. Because it's not just giving a dollar to somebody. It's giving somebody hope. 
somebody giving somebody love who hasn't been shown love. They don't even know really what love is until you say some kind words or meet them and greet them and throw your arms around them. Yes. You got to get closer to your mic. Can you hear me? No. Can you hear me? Not like I should. Yeah, I'm struggling. Oh, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know. Are you right in the mic? Yeah, I got the phone. I got the phone. Hit? I got the phone right up to me. Okay, I can hear you better now. Try it now. Oh, I went away from the BBC. Well, I was going to real quick for, for, for people to listen. One time I asked you, I said, man, I don't understand. But they always say dog is man's best friend. I say, seems to me, man it should be man's best friend. And you told me, you say, you ever had a dog? I said, yeah. That you know, if you, you the dog do something wrong, you take the roll up newspaper and smack it in the snout. The dog will look sad for about a minute. And after that, the dog just licking you like nothing happened. He said, "Take that." You say, "Take that same roll up newspaper and hit a human in, in in the nose with it." They might not speak to you for a year. A year. I've known people that not speak for you for five and ten years. <laughs> and so anyway, that's right in line with you. So like but that's that. a fact because they have mammalian brains. Matter of fact, they showed deep sea divers going into the ocean, the same ocean they went into three years ago and met up with a, um, a dolphin or some exotic fish even. I mean, a fish with a lump on his nose and all kinds of stuff. And they showed kindness to that fish. They came back three years later. Do you know the fish remembered them? And started coming up to them and, and pushing on them with his nose and circling around and making sure he was safe and all of that. Allah has clocked intelligence in these creatures like you wouldn't believe. Allah is evolving life on earth. They didn't used to be like this. Allah is evolving life on earth. He is Rabbil Alameen. So we need to evolve along with it. We have a conscious choice to evolve. You understand? When you see lions and tigers hugging humans who help them, I mean, literally jumping on the human and playing with them, tossing them over, and they're rubbing the lion's belly and put their mouth in the lion's, put their head in the lion's mouth, which I would never do. But they put their heads in the lion's mouth, in the lion with those big old teeth. He wouldn't maul them or, or gnaw them or whatever the word is. He wouldn't do it. These, these creatures have the almost human sensitivities. But that shows you that the brain is still, it's still evolving in these creatures. It's evolving in the human too. We just haven't caught up with it. We don't know what to do with all this evolution. So we spend it on computer games. We let our children spend it on, you know, play toys. They are also expanding into incredible brains and ingenuity. But the, 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 the manipulators are making sure that they funnel all of that excess evolution into trivial stuff. That's our challenge. Our children are going to continuously refuse to learn the majority of the so-called education that's being taught to them through these public schools because they know innately that it's trash. They know it inside. That I'm being bamboozled with this. This ain't education. This ain't helping me. So they get involved in other stuff. The one thing that will capture their attention is nunetics. Right, Gary Wayne? How old is he again? Nine? That young man stood on the phone with me and an 11-year-old with him for almost an hour. And I don't, mean, I don't mean faking like they were listening to me. I mean asking questions. I only intended to talk to them for 15 minutes. They kept me on the phone. <laughs> like two adults. They stopped That's our future. That. They, were, they, they were playing and laughing before I got to. But when I, once I started talking, it's like they transformed into college students. Eight and 11. You know Mahdi, he's 11. The other sister with us, Julia. She's been sick for a minute, but she's got two children. I think they're like eight or nine and 11. And I talked to them for an hour, over an hour on the phone, on a webinar, private webinar. And you would, you would have thought I was talking to two college, almost graduates. The answers they were giving me about nunetics. They said, I asked them a question. I said, can you tell? They said, yes, we read your book. 
<laughs> their mother's from Africa. They were born here. Them two children got straight up and started. They didn't want that seminar to end. Talking nine and 11. Then they said, well, we, we'd like our own classes from now on, please. You take her for an hour. Yeah, you take uh, me for an hour. You take her for an hour. Because they want the whole hour. What's wrong with us? We want the whole hour too, but we don't want to study. What's wrong with us? So we got to come into a better frame of mind. And 2023, semester 20, is going to be a show and prove period for all of us. Some of you won't cut the grade. I can tell you that now. And I need to say this to the larger crowd. Some of you are not going to cut the grade because you refuse to study and you refuse to answer any questions. And I don't know where you are. And I can't keep carrying you if I don't know who you are, where you are, where you're coming from, what you're learning, what you're not learning. I can't take passive listeners. I don't need them. Give your money to the masjid. Don't give it here. I only want people who are paying attention and who are ready to learn. And when I say the way you bother me is not by calling me, the way you bother me is by not calling me. Call me on a Saturday. Call me. Don't call me on a Sunday. Call me on a Monday. Afternoon. Instructor Bilal, I just had a question about this. Can you answer that? And I'll take 10 minutes and answer your question or give it to me in an email. Y'all know. I'll, I'll write you back an email lesson. That she calls me all the time. The instructor, I just had a question about this one thing in the Quran. I, uh, I, I love it. William Safi, he called me anytime. He called me morning, called me afternoon. Is this a good time for you? If not, he called me back later. And people like uh, uh, um, Dean, he'd come see me. <laughs> he live in Atlanta. He comes to North Carolina because he does work in Durham and other. And he says, hey, are you, are you free? Can we go to breakfast? And we go you know, two and three hours. I mean, it's just straight new netics, straight new netics. All this morning, I don't know who else was listening in Denny's, but they got an earful this morning. You and the waitress, and she, she almost danced away from the table. She was feeling so good. That's how you're supposed to make people feel. Yeah. And she didn't do everything right, but she got a, she got a tip that made her think she did everything right. Because I know she got some child somewhere or children somewhere and she's paying for some college education somewhere. And I know she ain't making no money off no waitress job. We know that. When you know those kinds of things, you prepare for them. And you say, let me take care of this person so that put a smile on their face. If that'll last the rest of her day. Nobody will be able to make her angry that day because she'd be so happy because she got a tip that if five people gave her a tip, it ain't going to add up to that tip. <laughs> It ain't no bragging or nothing. Allah says, keep your charity a secret, give in, in secret and in open, Allah says. Because there are other people looking at you in the open that says, well, I could have done that too. And you know what normally happens? They'll still say, yeah, Bilal, I know you gave a tip, but give her this too. Give her this all. You do it at the toll booth. Used to, when they had real people in the booths accepting your money. Pay for the one behind me. And you see, right? Hang it forward, they call it. Right? And you go through, you say, well, here's my toll, but I'm paying for the person behind me. Then when they come up and they hand their money, the toll clerk says, well, the person in front of you paid for you. Really? Well, tell you what, use this to pay for the person behind and be a long train of people paying because that's human nature. That's your fitra nature. You want to go back to the fitra? Start practicing more charity. Mm, it resonates, huh? Give before you asked. This is all I do. This is my livelihood. Y'all know that. So treat it like that. Say, this man gave his whole life just to study and teach us. So when I get a few extra dollars that I know I'm not really going to do nothing good, I'm going to send it to Instructor Black. A lot of y'all are doing that already. Regularly, with no fanfare. I love it. Stay in that habit. Because that frees me up. Me and William, now we got some big fish to fry now on the technology side of what we're trying to do. And I'm going to have to see him in person for a few days between Atlanta and North Carolina. Everything we do, we can't do it online. Everything we do, we don't want it online. <laughs> we got to meet face to face and make our plans. Because the worst thing in the world that will happen is somebody gets in between this and throws a monkey wrench in it. And now we can't broadcast no more because of whatever is happening to people every day. Get shut down, banned, and can't regroup. 
They've taken everything they've done online and it disappears overnight and you didn't have a backup. So you've lost all your material. That ain't gonna happen here because William and I are developing a fail, whatever, foolproof, fail safe way, protecting this Nunetics information. That's why I'm not putting anything else on YouTube that's on this level. They can have all the other stuff if they want. I have backups of all that already, but they will not get the new stuff that I'm about to introduce because their guidelines will not be with what I'm about to say because it's life and death. That's where we are right now. Information will be life and death. So don't be sensitive. Don't be overly sensitive about what things I say and how I say it. I'm trying to save your life. So be patient with people. Be kind and considerate and compassionate with people. Where else you got to go that you can't be that patient and wait, just wait. Wait your turn. Let the other person speak first. Wait and ask them, are they finished? Are you finished saying what you were saying, brother? Okay, now I can. Yeah, be considerate. And if you still don't get in, do what some people do. As soon as I hang up from the webinar, Salim, on the best year, they call me five minutes after I, I haven't hung up the computer good yet. It's, it's still warm. <laughs> yeah, they come calling me to ask me something that they say, I didn't want to stop. It. Like I be, but I didn't want to stop the class for this question. <laughs> I really need to ask you this. Right? Or well, Bayina should text me. Well, I didn't want to say this in the middle of the class because it didn't really have anything to do with the topic you were on, but I had this concern. That's how you do it. And pay attention to the things I send you, especially if Vayina's name on it. That information she's sending, I don't know what force in the universe is sending her that. I have to tell her, stop, slow down. I don't want any more of that. <laughs> I got enough of that. I can now go to this subject. And she's just the best collection of data person I've run into in years between her and Abdullah. They got cosmic sources where they're pulling information from. That's more than what I asked for, but they send it to me and I send it to you. So stay on that train. That's all I'm saying. I'm sorry I've kept you this long, but stay on that train. And uh, inshallah, we'll reconvene on Sunday for a regular class. I will have gotten my voice back by then, inshallah. Yeah, I know I love to talk. I can't help it. Um, and if there's anything you need to say to me in the interim, just email me or text me. Okay? I need your support. Like, you need this knowledge. So make it a reciprocal relationship. This is our union, our marriage. Okay? If we can revolve and share with each other, then the entire group can evolve. That's Fitra. So with that said, thank you for listening. I greet you in the greetings of peace that obligate each and every one of us to keep the peace. And Bayina, please send me this uh, attendance list. I have to keep an updated attendance so I know who's here with us from week to week. Thank you for your time and attention and your patience. Salam alaikum. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Wa alaikum assalam. Okay.